disgusted with what's going on on college campuses. Nothing to do with the anti-Semitism, really, just in general, you know. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. No choice but to get on. It mandates you get it on. We're excited to have Orny Adams back in studio. Orny's got dates. Irvine Improv coming up December 8th through the 10th, and then Ice House in Pasadena. It's beautiful there now. Chicago Improv. You go to ornyadams.com for all the live shows, and you can listen to his podcast, What's Wrong with Orny Adams, as well. Good to see you, Orny. Thanks. Good to see you, too. All right. Controversial subject. Hot glue guns. Got to get started on that. Everybody's uh, talking about it. I broke down... And I bought a second hot glue gun mm. the other day to perform a specific task. What's the task? The task is putting a bunch of stuff on a cinder block wall. Okay. So cinder block is a uh, block, and if you want to hang stuff on it, you have to kind of stick it. Right. Can't really... Oh, so this is interior. This is interior. Got it. Yeah. And... Uh, there are things you can do. You can drill a hole and put what's called a tap con. Yeah, we all know that. In it. Right? We have, you guys know tap <laughs> yeah. cons. We'll have to go uh, it's, it's, a, it's a concrete uh, fastener. Yeah. A screw. Yeah. And you can use a, um, a nail. Use a cement nail, a concrete right. nail. But now, the, is it straight cinder block or have you sealed it with dry lock? Mmm, dry lock. Look at you. Yeah. It is. It's straight cinder block that's been painted. Okay, but not dry lock. I would have dry locked it. One coat, two coats of paint. Called yeah. it a day. Yeah. The the problem with the waterproofing from the inside is there's a math problem. You know, it's like patching a boat from the inside. You mm-hmm. have to kind of do it from the outside because the water's pushing. Once it pushes through, it then just bubbles it up on the right. on the inside. Right. I but, do both sides, but you I, do both sides. Yeah, no, I'm a, yeah, I'm a what, perfectionist. Use a weenie roller, <laughs> sponge roller. Well, I'm glad you asked. It's it's a roller, but it's a specific roller. I think it's a seven grade they call it, and it, mm-hmm. it's more gradient. It What's has the nap more texture. on it? Yeah, that's it. It's the nap. That's the word. Well, what is the nap? I think it was like a seven. Does that sound right? Oh, uh, they have like three eighths, quarter inch, half inch, three quarter. For I'll have to really look at rough the surfaces. Yeah, yeah, check the nap. Yeah, I'm all in about the nap. Yeah. I've been just ignoring nap my entire life. This is a problem. Right. Most comedians have. They ignore <laughs> the nap. They look the other way. It's yeah. too uncomfortable. I look and I go, which one looks like the right size? Which one costs the cheapest? Which one's in the three pack? But then a guy at the store showed me, you've got to look at the container of dry lock, the container of the paint, and it tells you the nap on it. There's fine print, but I can't imagine yeah, many well, of these. I don't want to poke holes in this guy's uh, story from Home Depot, but the nap is decided by the wall. If the wall is oh. smooth, then a, a quarter inch nap will work. But if it's rough stucco, right, or it's got some kind of uh, knockdown finish on it, some some textured finish, then you need the nappier stuff because you have a texture right. on it now. So yeah. the 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 paint shouldn't inform the nap it should be the wall oh interesting but i think maybe i didn't read it because i didn't have my reading glasses at the time but i think it may have said on there what the there were several choices of nap it'll say the the thick three-quarter nap will say for rough surfaces mm. yeah anyway the glue gun right yeah the glue gun i don't tend to like to use the glue gun because it's good for bedazzling a belt buckle if you're going as Elvis this year for (laughs) Halloween. But it's not good for holding stuff on a wall. And what ornamental stuff? Is this a picture frame? It's foam core. It doesn't weigh anything. Okay. And I thought the glue gun would be enough. Why not the 3M strips? The command? You know, I was looking for some of that. I couldn't find it. And... um, I'll tell you. They have 8-pound, 12-pound, 18-pound, 22-pound. Wow. And I can tell you, I, I've, I've hung pictures. Yeah, that's what I got to do now. I, uh, I thought that the hot glue would, would be enough. No. I mean, how uh, many hot glue guns do you need to go through before you <laughs> finally figure it out? I have a good one, 
but I don't know where it is. It's packed away somewhere, and I can't yeah. find it. So I bought a cheap one. The thing about the hot glue gun that people need to understand is you can use it like a clamp, meaning you can take your hot glue, and I've done this before. If you got to stick something to stucco or cement mm-hmm. or block or something like that, use the hot glue gun, but also put a dab of 100% silicone next to what you're doing, and then hold it with the hot glue gun, and that'll set up fast and act like a clamp mm. so, so a, that the already... silicone will dry, and then it'll hold. So you're using the hot glue as a temporary yes, solution. Yes, yes, but I didn't it. do it that mm. way, and yeah. I paid the fiddler when yeah. I walked in today. Well, who goes cheap on a hot glue gun? I <laughs> well, mean, I'll tell you how, who goes, what's I'll, going on? I'll tell you who goes cheap on a hot glue gun. Yeah. A guy who owns an expensive hot glue gun and can't find it. <laughs> right. That's the guy who goes cheap. I find myself doing this. I, I know I own certain things, but it's just easier to go on Amazon, order a new one, and have it there within a day yes. than to just search for it. Yes. Well, we're now in a... We're now in a, in a world where... And I don't know if you guys are like this, but... My homes are homes, plural, homes, plural. <laughs> wow. My homes, wow. My multiple homes are filled with shit that should be thrown out, but would be the nicest thing you owned if you were 11. And yes. now I don't know what to do with it. Because when I was a kid, we had two categories. We had shit you kept and trash. Right. Now there's a third category, which is shit that came from Amazon that was made yeah. in China that oftentimes is still in the package that you'll never use, but you can't throw it out. Yeah, it's a weird purgatory. So we all essentially become hoarders. I de tell, facto yeah, hoarders. I tell everybody, hoard. <laughs> Do not throw anything out. So you'll you'll come to a point in your life where your parents, you'll leave your house, and your parents will say, we're cleaning up the attic. you right. got to get rid of everything. And so you go, do I really need this ColecoVision? Do right. I really need and your childhood, your Star Wars action figures? And you throw it out. Yes. And then 10 years later, you say, what the hell did I do? So you have to then, between the age of 20 and 40, make enough money to buy it back from like an antique shop or a pawn shop. So that's what I've done. I'm now going back buying everything that I gave away. Well, let me give a specific example, and we'll try to figure out what we do. Okay. All right. You just take swag. Yep. You go see Penn and Teller, which I did. You're friends with Penn and Teller, and after the show, you go backstage. Right. And you hang out with Penn and Teller. And then at some point, you're leaving, and Penn says, oh, hold on. We got some stuff for you. It's Penn and Teller playing cards. It's a Penn and Teller book, sort of pamphlet, right. you know, book, the history of Penn and Teller. And uh, maybe it's, you know, a challenge coin or belt buckle yeah. or something substantial, all with the Penn and Teller logo emblazed on it. And you say, thank you. This is awesome. Thanks. Thanks for this. Right to goodwill. Uh, then now what do we do? Right you, you to bring goodwill. It, you bring it back to your hotel room. Now, do we leave it for the mate? You don't want to throw it away. It's a it, first off. I had this shit when I was ten. I would have yeah. put it on display, it a showed all my friends. Yeah. You know, but now what? So then it makes its way back to the house, right? Yeah. And now it sits like on a table. And you go, do I put away? I have a Penn and Teller challenge card or yeah. Penn and Teller book <laughs> booklet. It's yeah. what, down. What, I, I I don't want to throw it out. It, it's brand new. I'm not sure who to give it to. Right. I Should I take it down to Goodwill? And if someone is really down on their luck, do you think they need a Penn and Teller <laughs> no, picture but book? Why not give it away to a listener on this show? That's what you it, should do. Oh, it presents prizes. its own logistical problems. Yeah, though. but now that's why have... you have all these people. They'll ship it off. Okay, Dawson. I got a new job for you. I, I'm just saying I have that time. Film it. Dawson's in charge of fulfillment. Times 1,000. Yeah. I have this. And I don't know what it's to not do even with that. it. No. Like, uh, all the guests that come in here to promote a book. Yes. They will give Adam two or three copies of the book, but it, but they also sign it and make it out to him. So now yes. he can't get rid of it. Oh, they ruin it. If you go to Goodwill and you go, hey, Adam Carolla, thanks for having me. We're yeah. a huge fan. Yeah. And somebody sees Here's that. Here's what we do. Here's what we do. We go to Vegas. We do shows at Kimmel's Club. I pack... 
some of this great stuff in mm-hmm. the Forerunner. Drive it out there. After mm-hmm. we do a show, try to sell it as merch. Okay. Well, you've solved the problem. But what I, I want to know is what is the price difference between a good glue gun and the one you ordered? Right. Uh, I bought the one. I just went in and bought it like six ninety nine or something like that. Yeah, that's that. dollar store stuff. And then there's the good ones are probably in the thirties or yeah. something, something like that. Wow. But but all it does, it does the same thing. It heats glue, liquefies it, and then you stick it to the thing. But maybe but, maybe it's in the cartridge. But this feels very old school. It feels like to me there's something called Gorilla Glue. Yeah, and it comes it comes out of two different sides. They fuse together. Right. And it's like cement. So I, th- I think you're well, thinking. Well, you're thinking about an epoxy with a part A and a part B and a resin and a catalyst. And some yeah. of it says cement on it. Yeah. Gorilla glue is that polyurethane glue. But now Gorilla makes the other one yeah. as but, well. But yeah. I think what we're saying is glue technology has increased so much in the last I know. few decades. Yeah. I mean, hot glue gun. the only time I see hot glue guns now are, are women crafting. I know. It makes me a little wow. gay for, for, <laughs> wow. for buying no, one. No, I don't think you picked attack. up on that insult. Not an attack. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to fire up my Could you, yeah, tell, jet contractor saw and, like, and, and get it out of my late. system. Tell us about the Taylor Swift concert you went oh, to. Oh, I made bracelets. <laughs> yeah. I made friendship bracelets. Yeah. And I traded them with all my Swifties. So yeah. you are, I, I suspect now you are watching football for the first time because Taylor Swift yes. is dating a f- football player. I didn't know player. there was a full season. I yep. thought they just kind of played sporadically. Yeah, no, it started, too. Yeah, the I'd, football thing started to yeah. catch on. Now. I'd heard of the Super Bowl, but that's about as deep as I went with it. Are you upset when they aren't showing Taylor Swift, but they're showing the game? Yeah, no, I don't like, I didn't tune in to see guys right. run into each other. Right. I want to see fans in yeah. luxury boxes hugging it out with people they met three days earlier. I mean, you are for sure Swifty because, and you can put up Adam's tour schedule, it coordinates with every city Taylor Swift is doing a show in. And I noticed that. We both single-handedly changed the economy of this yeah. country. You know? <laughs> Me and my 48 people at Zany's, yeah. her packing SoFi seven nights in a row. Yep. Yep. Big, big impacts yep. in terms of well, listen, society. Ever since you started aligning your tour and became a Swifty, yeah. you're now saying house is plural. Uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Right. And I then, used to say apartment. Apartment. Now I say houses. 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 And I like how you buy the cheap glue gun to sort of like, I'm a man of the people. Yeah. Keeping Grounds it real. Them. Keeping it real. Yeah. So I mounted six of these foam core things <laughs> on the wall, and the first one fell off last night. But that means <laughs> the other five are going. They're going. So I'm going to have to redo the entire thing. Yeah. So I got that to look forward to. <laughs> Another to do. Yeah. But you Another know what? to do. I excel so amazingly in so many different subjects that things like this are probably good for me. Okay, so this is a failure to to you. This is a failure. Yeah, it's a failure. Uh, I I I should have known not to go with the hot glue gun. I should have gone with the glue gun as a clamp Mm. and then a secondary. uh, Caulking something that would stick and dry overnight. Then we'd be fine because the first one took three days to fall off or two days to fall off. But the silicone would have grabbed it and be dry yes. by then. But I didn't do it. I don't think this is a failure. It's a teachable moment. It's a teachable moment. Yeah. You know what's amazing to me hmm. is that the suction cup has not evolved in my lifetime. In so, place. right, you put, like, in, uh, here's a place where you put it. In your shower, there's always something that has to have a suction cup. Yes. In the middle of the night. Yeah, you, you hear this crash. <laughs> yes, and you don't know what happened, but the suction cup always fails at nighttime. Yes, and I I want to put up if I had Corolla money mm-hmm. and Swifty money, I would put up a suction cup in one of my bathrooms, plural, and I would have a cam on it at all times, and we ah. could bet when it's going to fall. Yeah, because no, it's it fix the suction cup. We've had. Two major earthquakes in SoCal in the time that I've been here. Major. One was at like 4.18 a.m. And the other was, you know, 6.21. Mm. Meaning they only hit when you're in REM. Right. And 
there's nothing you can do with an earthquake when you're sound asleep other than have no fucking idea what's going on right. and then wake up and next thing you know, you're piling out of the house with a boner. Neighbors are looking at you. You know, <laughs> If an earthquake just hit at noon, yeah, all contacts, you'd, you'd be dressed, you'd have a cup of coffee the in a- you, yeah, yeah. you'd know exactly what was going on and you'd know what to do. Right. In the Asian uh, countries, it's always, Japan's always during the day. Because they're yeah. always like they're doing news and they show people in the office. But right. here, you're right. And I, when I lived in an apartment, these clouds, these buffoons would all leave. Like there was an earthquake. It's not a big one. And they'd all go out into the streets. Well, let me explain. It, can I explain what the phenomenon is? What? And Dawson, or Chris, you can look it up. But I, I think the one that was in 94 was, um, that was at like four 14 in the morning or something. 4.30. 4.30. You've never been... Whether Whatever time you go to bed, you are in your deepest ram at 4.30. You're as far... You're much <laughs> further out at 4.30 than you are at 1.30. Uh, 4.30 is the latest. That's the furthest you are into your sleep cycle. 4.30 hits. Yes, if it hit at 4.30 in the afternoon, people would be standing... They'd have coffee. They'd be on their feet. They yeah. know exactly. They'd be yeah. dressed. They yeah. know exactly what was going on. Now, people, and when did the seventy one or seventy two? Because I remember where I was. I was asleep at my mom's house in the service porch. But that was more like six forty five or something. Six a.m. Six a.m. Yeah. All right, st- asleep. We've had two major earthquakes. <laughs> I've I've been asleep. Yeah. That's that's more than a coincidence. That's the same. It's a conspiracy. That's the same with your shampoo cradle falling off your right. Lucite door. Oh, I see the connection. See you the made. connection yeah. I made. Yeah. I okay. Now. now, let me explain to you what is going on in your apartment building, okay. and, or your old apartment. Old building. apartment. Yeah, I've done well. You see where I live now. It's <laughs> big time. It's magical. I've done, well. I've done real. You've well. done real well for yeah. yourself. You yeah. love my colors. You love the palette is the palette's amazing. amazing. Oh man. Yeah. What I do, I walked in, I said, man, there's the, the, the craftsmanship yeah. in Orney's place is magnificent. Yeah. Somebody cared. Somebody built like a custom banquette that was the right color and the right shape. They like dog-eared corners and stuff. And I was like. And, the, and all the, the marble is, uh-huh. it, it coordinates with the, the roof, the way and it, the flow, it's mid-century. The it's flow, all, the dog. And I beautiful. just, I looked at Orney and I was like, man, whoever had this house before really was into detail. And then I paused and went. Gay couple, right? <laughs> or anyone, yeah. Because <laughs> that's because well you yeah. know. But this is why you have to stereotype. Yeah, I knew who this guy, who this couple was, and I knew they were gay <laughs> by walking into his kitchen. I was like, oh, okay, the flow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. The flow. So it has good flow. Yeah, it's yeah. great. So here's what goes on in the apartments. Because I, unlike many other, your soft comedian buddies they're soft now soft why is that never did an honest day's work in their life i worked earthquake rehab i rehabbed commercial buildings and apartment buildings and retrofitted them sounds like a nightclub in vegas earthquake rehab rehab. yeah yeah Yeah. 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 performing tonight yeah Yeah. earthquake yeah yeah that earthquake rehab yeah yeah you get an iv and watch a huge black comedian perform (laughs) (laughs) i know the ins and outs okay. of rehabbing. You, you start under the building, you dig a footing, right. you pour a footing, you build a cripple wall. Right. Yeah, they call it a cripple wall. That's what they call it. Uh-huh. You shear wall it, you tie it into the floor above you, you use hold downs yeah. and all thread to go up there. Then you shear wall the one above it and you go up, you use tension anchors on the side. That's how, that's how I knew the whole uh, Seinfeld apartment was a lie. How'd you know? Because he had it, he had tension anchors outside of the building. I knew it wasn't shot. The uh, exterior was shot in L.A., not shot in New York, because they don't have earthquakes in New York, and they don't retrofit uh, buildings with the tension anchors on the squares on the outside of the building. I used to install those things, and I was like, that apartment exterior is L.A., mm. and it is. We, we looked into it. Okay. See what I know? Yeah, you know that. <laughs> Seinfeld doesn't know but that. But I'm still stuck on He's you soft. calling comedian soft. He's soft. He's done very well he for soft. He picked the wrong building. He's done very Not well for soft. Not as good as Taylor. Not as good as Taylor. No. Okay. No. You want a bracelet? 
I'd love a brace. Like, Seinfeld? Can you bedazzle something? Could you <laughs> My bedazzle the back of on my... the fritz. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. Is my mic lower than everybody else's? No. Is this a conspiracy? It just, it just feels this okay. way. Okay. All right. So, you sound great. Yeah, thank you. Your voice sounds strong. It's, some sounds, it's more of the words. Not really. That I no. no yeah, it is. That's it's what you're responding to. You're not responding to the tone. No, it's all, it's all tone. It's all substance. It's all substance. You're not, you don't have the substance. Oh, I'm sure sound. I do. No, I'm you have the sure. sound. This, there's nothing wrong with the sound. It's the substance. I'm all substance. <laughs> I'm driving this podcast today. Hate to tell you. All right. The reason your neighbors poured out onto the lawns during the earthquake. Straight. Straight. And the reason... After 94, in this very neighborhood we're in right now, I saw people pitching tents on their lawn, not wanting to go back into their apartment buildings. Is that how this whole thing started? With the tents all uh, all over Los Angeles? Could have been. Ah, Yeah. Could have been a homeless guy walking by going, you know what? I've been living in a refrigerator box like a fool. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You guys are pitching tents. (laughs) Yeah. I'm on to something. I can do that. Yeah. So. That seems uh, like a bad idea. The tent on the lawn. Yeah. It, what, whatever it is you're doing is always more dangerous than yeah. the thing you're avoiding, but it seems safer. Yeah, you pitched a tent under power lines out <laughs> onto the lawn, yeah. and then some drunk driver hops the curb, hits right. the pole, and you're electrocuted yeah. on your lawn where it's safe, yeah. right? Yeah. So many people in the Los Angeles area are from places North, you know, South America and uh, Mexico and Honduras and mm-hmm. all all these all these people, all these places. When an earthquake hits, it devastates mm-hmm. their their village. The reason it devastates everything is because everything is built with block and concrete, and it's unreinforced, and it all falls down. That's what affects what what earthquakes do is it affects masonry. Every chimney falls over. The house doesn't. The freeway, the things that fuck up are the big concrete parking structures. They stack up and they Mm -hmm. pancake on each other. Freeway overpasses. It's all concrete. It's all masonry. None of it is wood because that nothing happens with wood. But these people come from a place where if a 6.7 hits the village, it's totaled. Yeah. We live in a place where 7.3 hits the village and does nothing. But what does that have to do with the people in my building? Because I can tell you that they weren't from South America. They were they were they were sympathizers of oh, the they South were. American people. Yeah. No, they didn't pitch tents out there. They no, just ran they out. didn't pitch they, they went outside. Out there. So what I would do is I would the earthquake would happen, there'd be some shaking, a little bit of fear. What was that? And then I'd I'd look on my phone to see. You know, everybody has to report on Twitter at the time. And then I'd go out on the balcony and I'd look at these losers right. on the street. Right. And I thought, I'm not going to be part of that. Right. And then I would look for the one girl in the building that I was kind of interested in. Mm-hmm. And if she was out there, right, then i go, this is an opportunity. <laughs> right. Damsel in distress. That's right. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to sleep alone. Don't no. pinch a tent. <laughs> yeah. I'll pinch a tent. Yeah. When the Do you see what I just did there? <laughs> go, go, take a minute. Stop yeah, I thinking. Got it. I got you it. got it. Okay. Because you, you accused me of not your listening. Pants. That's no. right, Adam. I know your audience. When the, I know your audience. When the buildings, Believe me, I know your audience. When the buildings are rocking, Orny comes knocking. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing yeah. here. Yeah. All right. So I don't know what the fuck I was talking about. Fuck glue hot glue guns. I got him to go back to 100% silicone yeah. now and, and do it that way. These All these other ones are going to fall off. I wish you had talked to me first. I should have called. Yeah. I know. I mean, you saw all the paintings on my wall, and then I've actually got, I have wood art carvings that are on yes. there with Beautiful. 3M strips. Yeah, I should have gone with the 3M or yeah. the, or the uh, I think there's the, the new one, which is the alien tape. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's not it's as okay. good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, take we a should break. talk about. Hmm. That, well, not, we can't take a break. There's now two kinds of blue tape, mm. I, and I don't get that. They now are selling. You can pay three ninety five for the blue tape that you've used and everybody has used. The for, painters tape, the traditional. Yes. Tape, yeah. mm-hmm. Now they have one that they claim is a cleaner line. Mm-hmm. Oh right, right. And it's like about three dollars more. Mm. Yeah, and the the disenfranchised, the poor. This disproportionately affects poor black and brown people who yeah. can't afford the nicer edge on their tape oh you come into my house you go that's the expensive blue tape oh edge. yeah no that's <laughs> yeah. rarefied air there. yeah yeah i don't mess around 
Yeah. Three bucks? I got that. I, I got that a, like you got homes. I may make a Swifty bracelet out of some of that high-end tape. I don't think even... A, your glue gun couldn't even hold a Swifty bracelet. No, oh, my glue pathetic. gun. Pathetic. I, I should have known. It's on me. Yeah. A man should not be rocking a what's, glue gun. What's the worst thing that happens? If you, you have an extra glue gun that you can put in one of your other homes. You have 15 homes. Uh, we're going to have to. Uh, no, I'm, I'm going to have to give away the glue gun with the Penn and Teller deck of cards. Okay, here's That's what you what do. I'm saying. Here's what you do. All this crap, we just leave at the Jimmy Kimmel Club in Las Vegas because he mm. has that bookcase. Mm -hmm. Like, and it's got like. C comic memorabilia, other things mm -hmm. like I heard there was Sarah Silverman's book is in there, and I said, "Oh, that was kind of Jimmy." You talking about in the lobby? Yeah, and Jimmy oh. doesn't even know. Sarah just walked in one day and put her book in yeah, the book. Yeah, we have. Which um, I think is genius. I think my character, Mister Burcham from Crank Yankers, is in that bookcase. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, you know the you know the story of that bar at Jimmy Kimmel's club, the lobby down there. What is it? He. Jimmy built a barn. It's funny. Barn is like rich man, poor man. If you're, if you're poor, you got a barn. Yeah. If you're rich and you live in the Hollywood Hills, you build a barn yeah. next to you, right? So Jimmy built a high-end barn next to his house, and it's beautiful. Mm. And did a whole bar. It was just a beautiful bar. And... It, it was kind of a spinal tap moment because he, he walked uh, the guys when they were doing the club. He showed them his bar in his barn. Right. And he said, I'd like it to look like this. But he didn't mean a doppelganger. He just yeah. meant like the vibe, yeah. the, this kind of wood and, you know, this kind of uh, this this kind of uh, vibe. Uh, yeah, vibe. I, I said vibe. That's yeah. enough. Yeah, you're right. That's yeah, this vibe. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, motif. There. Something homage. like that. Homage. Yeah, I want you to do a stirring homage to this bar. Yeah. And then they just went out and did a nut for nut, nail for nail, plank for plank replica, <laughs> replica of his bar. That scared of Jimmy Kimmel. Right. And yeah. so I don't know if you've ever been in Jimmy's barn bar. Yeah. I don't think Jimmy even knows it exists. But, but yeah. you have. No, I haven't. No, yes, you have. Oh, there. That. In Vegas. Well, what what's the deal with the chandelier? Because the rumor is... That his wife, Molly, gave it to the club behind Jimmy's back. That she hated it so much. Could be. Yeah. <laughs> I will uh, I will broach this. For How this. much money do you have to have that you get to have your own chandelier? Hey, when, when, you're, uh, when you're making Swifty type money, mm. yeah. you commission lighting. We have people hold lighting. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. Don't even, I don't even mount mine to the ceiling. You got a I, I, poor guy, guy. Yep. <laughs> just sweating his ass off on an A-frame ladder that he I picked up from Home Depot. Oh, I, I love the A ladders. I, I, I hope I get to the point where, like, it flips. Like, Bob Dylan has this great line, the first one now will later be last. Mm -hmm. And I hope it comes to the point where Kimmel has to sit there with a flashlight and light me on stage. That's oh, my yeah. dream. It's going to happen. It's my dream. You keep waiting. I know it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. By oh, the way, I, in the, the Kimmel news, there's oh, Kimmel news. What is it? Well, his birthday dinner's coming up. Hmm. And the way the birthday dinner goes is we all show up to an expensive restaurant, and then uh, James Baby Doll Dixon, the agent, says he's paying. Okay. And then Cousin Sal goes nuts trying to run the bill up. Okay. So the, the last time I was at it, they brought a truffle ball out for like three thousand dollars and sal snatched it and threw it against the wall oh, oh wow and then white truffle yeah. that's the expensive stuff yeah and yeah. then it's also my rap name <laughs> also, <laughs> <laughs> you're back i'll be open corolla's back way. yeah so <laughs> we got to go over your trick-or-treat joke by the way yeah i saw you do that in vegas oh yeah let's go over it yeah all right but but let me just yeah. finish yeah uh, but you should know that's not Part of the act. It just happened to be the trick or treat. No, you don't do you that one all year round? No. But we can go over it. Yeah. Okay. So uh, then Sal will go in, and if this restaurant sells, and they do sometimes, like bathrobes or cookbooks, <laughs> oh, like he'll the, buy all the, the bathrobes yeah. and all the cookbooks. The he ordered ones. three seafood towers once, you know, 220 bucks a pop, you yeah. know what I mean? So he will go nuts. So. This time, at least according to the email chain I'm on, uh, James Baby Dalt Dixon, who's in New York, will not be able to attend. But 
He has uh, graciously said he will pay for it, but not if Sal finds out he's paying oh, for it. He's on him. Wait, now I'm so confused. Baby doll's not going to be there, right? No. So why are we concerned about paying? It's going to be a normal to have. He's paying for it. He still's offered to pay. Very gracious of the, him. The agent. Yes. yes. Yeah. He's paying. Okay. As long as... Sal doesn't find out he's paying. But Sal's not going. <laughs> Why isn't Sal... I what? thought you just said Sal isn't. Oh, no, Sal's going. Baby no, Doll's Baby not Doll's going. Baby Doll's not going. Oh. The agent. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. The agent's name is Baby Doll? Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, it's James Baby Doll Dixon. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He's in New York. So, so now a whole chain went around saying... I'm paying, but we have to have it. Don't tell Sal. This is a dilemma. Yeah, I feel for like you guys. we're telling Sal right now because this will air. <laughs> well, it's a D, it was a DTS party. Yeah, and uh, somehow somebody. How much do let you, Sal know? How much do you hate this party? I love it, except for one problem. I grew up poor. Food was a major issue for me growing up, and I hate waste. Mm. So when the third seafood tower shows up and we're all full, we're all stuffed, and it's like, ah, yeah. I'm like, uh, I, 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 you can't throw it away. Like, you, you can't, there's $70 worth of crab meat here. We yeah. can't toss it. Like, they have to do something with yeah. it. And everyone else, you know, it's like you, you get a porterhouse steak and then a Wagyu steak shows up. And I'm like, I, I'm, yeah. I can't throw this away. We can't just send it back or whatever. You're That's already my in pain problem. from eating yeah. so much. Mm-hmm. But you're social. You like talk to people. Yeah, I can't see that. You can't <laughs> see it. No, and you drink, right? Yeah. So what will you order? Beer or like a martini? I'll order a martini. Yeah. You can't see the social part, huh? I cannot see you. All right. Well, yeah. let's explore that. Okay. And then we'll break down the hol- the Halloween joke. Okay. All right. Oh, so you show up. Hold on. We'll take a break, then we'll break down the okay. Halloween joke, okay. and we'll break down uh, my, my social okay. uh, interactions. Fascinated. We'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about Simply Safe. Well, there's no wrong time to protect your home, but this fall, well, that's an especially good time. Get up to 50% off a brand new Simply Safe home security system. Voted best home security system of 2023 by U.S. News and World Report. So that covers it all. These guys are great. They're a great couple. They started this company years ago. They've been with us for a million years. We all use them here. 24-7 professional monitoring. Under a buck a day. Half the cost of traditional home security. Money back guarantee. 60 days risk-free. If you don't love it, return your system for a full refund. And for a limited time, 50%. Save 50% on any new system with a fast protect plan. So what do you do? Go to Simply Safe Two Eyes, simplysafe.com slash Adam and get that 50% off. Simply Safe, there's no safe like Simply Safe. Let me tell you about Angie, homeowners. You know, it's a lot of work to own a home, whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects. It can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie, your home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. They're too sensitive. Everybody's got to just chill out. Chill out. We've lost our minds. And I'm not talking about the gluten people. I'm not. (laughs) I have been going after the gluten people now for 10 years. For 10 years. People that have been watching me for the last 10 years know I was on top of this, this fad diet back when we thought it was called glutton. Back when we thought it was called glutton. All I'm saying is we've been on this planet for 200,000 years. In the last 10, 
we all discovered we can't eat wheat? It's bullshit. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. Orny Adams is on the Adam Carolla Show. You go to ornyadams.com for all the live dates. All right, so you not envisioning me interacting socially. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Okay. All right. I find you socially awkward. Mm Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine you walk in. Are you shaking hands? Are you saying hi to people? Do you stand in a corner and the people that come up to you come up to you? No, I'm very social. You are. Well, there's a lot of people I don't really care for, so I'm not really social with them. But uh, there's then people I care, care deeply about, and I'm very social with them. Okay, so when the podcast ends today, Mm-hmm. And you put your, you look down and you walk out of here. You don't say thank you or you don't say, hey, good to see you. That's or, right. So that's, that's not, uh, you're not on the spectrum? Like, no, well, he said it's people he cares about. I got care about them. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, so it is, it's oh. me. Oh, well, listen. <laughs> Dan Ackward was in here the other day. It'll air after this. But I walked that fucker to his truck. Yeah. Oh, you did? Oh, we hugged it out. Gave him wow. a piggyback ride. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Gave him one of my Swifty bracelets. Did yeah. you start his car for him? <laughs> I just can't imagine you because even when we text, mm-hmm. you, it's one word answers. So I, is, this, I get, is this an I, act? No. I, the, the texting, there's there's too much extra talk is 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 my thing, especially in the form of a of a text. But, I don't I don't I I don't like I don't like the extra kind of bullshit talk. People people get angry. But your text to me last night, it's like a caveman. Yeah. Me, you, podcast. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. 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 It's, but he said that much? Yeah, he said that much. That's great. Four words. Yeah. But you're like me. It's like you've so much to say, and it's like it's almost like you can't not say it. But in texting, or like when the show's over, unless you're Dan Aykroyd or Polly Shore. You walked him to his car too. <laughs> <laughs> was no, nice. I listen. I well, first off, the texting. I just there's too much sort of in between talk. Like like when somebody says you want to go to dinner Saturday night, uh, I just write yes seven o'clock. I don't want to go looking forward to it. It's going to be fun because we'll do it when we're, when we're there. We didn't, we, what we need to do is we need to get there. Okay. We don't, we don't need to sort of soft pedal it before, before that. There's too much women do it. Women do it all the time. Like when you see women, Oh, Hey girl, Hey girl, looking so good. Oh, (laughs) Uh they don't even like each other. Right. Can't wait. Just, Just we're going to dinner Saturday. We'll see you there. And when we get there, I'll talk my ass off. Yeah. But in the form of the text, mm-hmm. you know, here we are. Yeah. And I realize that people think it's curt, but everyone just talks too much in their text. <laughs> like you said, what time? And I just wrote back 11. But I didn't say 11, see you there. Yeah. Because it's just too... And people get angry at me all the time. Like somebody <laughs> I said, wonder why. So, I know. Somebody <laughs> said to me, uh, and this happens all the time. They go... Do you still have that stage you used to have? And I go, no, it's gone. And they go, so it's nowhere around? And I go, no. And they go, so you don't think? And I go, no. And they go, why are you being a dick? And then I go, you asked a question. I just said, no, it's, we don't. We can move on to the next yeah. well, thing. A- I know that's me being an asshole, but wh- why do we have to like... Because Talk everyone down. Why three laps? Because I'll show you. If it wasn't texting, so let's just say we're having that conversation on a podcast right now. And I said, hey, Adam, do you still have that stage? No. You wouldn't say that. No, you would have a story about the stage. Oh, oh as a matter oh, of fact, you know, do you know the yes, story about sure. that? No, so on the right. podcast, As you're a like, podcast, we would have a story. You're like a superhuman. And then the podcast ends in your <laughs> rain man. Yes. Yes. <laughs> or I see you in the club. It's like, you know, it's I, I feel bad. I'm like, oh no, Adam has to say hi to me. Oh please. Like you I came feel, into the club. I feel I bad. said hi. We spoke for twenty minutes. Yes. That that was it. What are you talking <laughs> no, about? No, but I felt bad. I feel like well, I'm these are your, you. these are your insecurities. Uh, I'll agree with that. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah. you, you remind me of, of something funny. When I was in New Orleans and I was at a really nice I was staying at the uh the Ritz. 
Okay. Mm. And I was at the bar and they have a nice jazz band playing. And mm-hmm. I'm having a, a Vucare, which is a New Orleans drink. Wow. That's five liquors combined. Wow. I was by myself. You know, I was doing a corporate show. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden I hear, woo! And these two sets of women came together and were screaming and couldn't believe that they saw each other. And yes. I was like, the level of excitement. Yes. And then I listened, and it turns out these women were not only all staying in the hotel, but they were all there for the same wedding mm-hmm. and all knew they were going to be at the bar that uh, night. Yes. I figured one of them had been missing in the woods for yes. six months. <laughs> Abducted by Hamas. Yes. But no, I know that's my whole thing. It, it feels ginned up. That is. It feels manufactured, yeah. like a lot of the stuff. And it also, I I don't. I don't know, but I, I like the economy of words when you're conveying ideas, especially when you're just trying to get it done. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, And so I go short, and then people get confused and go long. Like if I say to my sister once in a while, so I got a house in La Cunada, and I have a condo in Malibu. That's what Taylor Swift has done for me, right. two domiciles. yeah. yeah. And so my sister will, like, send me a text and say, like, you want to go for a walk this weekend? And I go, yeah. And she'll go, where are you going to be at this weekend? And I'll just say, the house. And then she'll text back and go, the Malibu condo? or the Now, to me, I was done with house. house. I just said the house. If, if, If I was in the condo in Malibu... And expecting her to show up on Saturday yeah. at noon, that would be on me. I'd be an <laughs> asshole. Sure. But but she does the lap. Now, a lot of people do that. I don't want to say the house in La Cunada. I just want to say the house. So you're annoyed by anybody that can't read your mind. Yes. Yeah. You must be crescent. Yeah. It, Otherwise, <laughs> we cannot have a relationship. I think this is part game for you. I think you enjoy this. No, I'm. I'm if you say to me, this is something that women do, and I'm, I'm trying to work this joke out but but it's 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 basically women live seven years longer than men Mm -hmm. and i wish they lived seven years less than men Mm -hmm. because i feel like they would be on the clock because anybody (laughs) who's dealt with a woman it's like she'll leave town and then she'll call and she'll go is there water in the dog bowl and you go yes and they go so there's water and you go yes and they go she's got water and it's like what, what, what are we doing? Right. I just said yes. And uh, by the way, I think that's the extra seven years that's causing this. Yeah. You have all the time in the world to just sort so of wax on it. Yeah. about if you had seven years less, you'd be like pow, pow, pow. Right. Maybe it's. We wouldn't hear the same maybe stories she's dated, over and over. Oh, God. <laughs> maybe she's dated so many incompetent men. And then you come along, no, and, it's, and it's, you'll have to say it once to it's, you. It's just a sort of rambling insecurity because they're worried about the yeah. dog, and it's going to take them a few answers to get them down so from it, that. It, 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 when you're with a woman, uh, are you this economical with your words texting? Because women love texting. I am. But people know I'm, I'm at a deficit when it comes to typing and spelling and texting. What about just, the voice I'm, to text? I'm just no good. And for, uh, I, could, I could probably do it. Just, uh, just to let you know how, how I am. And maybe we can figure this one out. I tried it in the green room of a club with my opener and we couldn't figure it out. Here's, here's how you know I'm not a douche. When people say... Um, you know, are we going to meet then? Or are we going to do that? I would like to type back yes. But I hit Y, and the name mm. that comes up is yeah. And yeah feels passive aggressive yeah. <laughs> to me. So then I have to go to all the lengths and all the trouble of finding the E and the S. I, it's every part of me wants to hit yeah. The predicting. But yeah. F- it feels like someone will go like, can we get on a phone call later today? Yeah, feels passive aggressive. Think, I don't know yeah. why. So I go through the trouble. So how dare you <laughs> accuse me of being cold? And then I said to someone in the back of a club like a year and a half ago, I said, can we do it where I hit the Y and yes comes up? And he goes, yeah, I can do that. And he's like, Fu- and fucked with it? my phone for half an hour. And then he's like, I guess we can. You absolutely can. He couldn't do it.
You know what's great? Thank God Adam has not discovered tap back where he can press it and give a thumbs up or something like that. Because mm, you would not discover that. Oh, you would be, uh, yeah. All right. So I'm extremely social oh, I at, in these environments. <laughs> I'd love to follow you and but just do a I documentary. Don't, I don't say a word to people uh, like I'm not going to, like like a guy dropped off uh, a package okay. last night mm. and he was uh, had an accent. And he dropped the box off, and he goes, uh, can you sign for it? And I signed for it, and he goes, uh, what's your name? And uh, I said, uh, Adam. And he said, Sam? And I said, <laughs> yeah. Because I, right. I don't want to do any more of this. Right. The, we're done. I'll never, I'll never I, I have a very, I'm never going to see you again. You think my name is Sam. <laughs> I got no problem with that. <laughs> I get that. But yeah. I'm talking about people like me who fit into your life in an interesting way. I know I'm not on the uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel invite oh, Super Bowl bite, party bite list. Your <laughs> I know I'm not your I know I'm not going to the the big steak and seafood dinner no, for his birthday. Bite your tongue, yeah. Orny. Yeah. It is Orny, right? <laughs> it is. Okay. Like I understand, yeah. but I serve a utility, you know. Oh what I yeah, mean? no, you do stuff. But like, do you think I hug it out with my gardener when I see him in the yard? No. <laughs> well, he serves. Yeah, he, he sure does. <laughs> but you know, like when you texted me last night, I'm like, okay, cool. See you at eleven. Like confirmed. You could write, oh, great, looking forward to it. You know, you're one of my favorite guests. I know. Uh, I should have. I should have said that. Yeah. But I thought I'd just wait and say it in person. Okay, let's hear. It. All right, I would think it in person. <laughs> let's hear. It. <laughs> Orny always come through, yeah. Especially when Jay Moore's out of town. Oh, is that what happened, Jay? Uh, it wasn't out. Of, I, you know, he's what happened. He, he married up. He married up. Oh, he's done, isn't he? He married up. Yeah, he married up. It's a success story. It is. He, yeah, he married Taylor Swift essentially. It's now, amazing. Now, Orny, I listen. I, you're on a very short list of people that are very funny, and uh, that's why you're here. Thank you. And, and I did this on short notice, and I would not do this on short notice for most people, but I like and respect you. I feel the same way about you. That's why I drove up to your house and yeah. stayed for an extra hour and walked around and looked at the, what the gays had done before they Yeah, did my podcast. Now, and, all right, now the Halloween Wait a minute, joke. admit you enjoy doing my podcast. I enjoy doing your Thank podcast. You. Don't blow it off. I'm not competition for you. No, I love your podcast. Yeah. What's wrong with it. Orny Adams? What's yeah. wrong with Orny Adams? Now, uh, the Halloween bit. Yes. We're going to break it down. Let's do it. All right. Oh, well, I, I don't really... I only did it because it was Halloween. But it's an interesting concept that you resent <clears throat> resent the people trick-or-treating in your neighborhood. Yes. That didn't earn the right to be in your neighborhood. That you were poor, you grew up poor. Okay, uh, for yes. example, I give out full candy bars. Full candy bars. Full. Right. And for the neighbor's kids that I know, they get the pounders. The pounders? Like a I, I, don't pound. know, I don't know gay slang. <laughs> what, is, what do you do to them? <laughs> yeah, the, the, like a, I give them. left them. Yeah, a pound. Let, let me explain to you. There's a pounder? The neighborhood I I've live in. Trying to give them diabetes? I've yeah. never heard of a pounder. Yeah, a whole. Uh, uh, Dawson will find it. He'll put it up on the big screen. Are you talking about the mega bar? Yes. Like a brick? Yes. Wow. Because these kids will grow up and they'll protect my house. Oh. Oh, you're and, investing in yes, security. Yes, in the future. Yeah. And I still They're remember. Gonna be fat with diabetes. I don't You're not care. even going to pick up the phone. If oh, I know. I, and it's got to be like, it, some people in my neighborhood will send over like, hey, my my kids are uh, have gluten allergies or this one's mm. allergic to. And some of the neighbors actually pre-drop off candy for their kids. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right. So, yes, the concept is, well, the concept is twofold. I have many policies that make me sound cruel but they really would benefit the people that I'm uh, seemingly being cruel to. Okay. You know what I mean? So much like the football coach finding the athlete who has potential being extra hard on him, trying to bring out the best. Can I them. guess that it is you feel like it denudes the kids of having motivation to achieve success to move into your neighborhood if you give them the trick-or-treating candy in that neighborhood? It's it's kind of two or threefold. One is is I don't want seven year olds indoctrinated into a system where we go. Let's just go find people that are more successful and get better shit from them. Mm -hmm. I don't like that mode. I like to go out and make some hay while the sun shines okay. mode. You know, and I got torn apart 
several years ago by the Young Turks because I said, make your own kids breakfast. I don't want them as part of the meal program at school. I don't want the government feeding your kids. I want you to feed the kids and I want them to know that you're feeding them the kids and it feeding the kids and you can do it. Mm -hmm. And there's not this part where it's like, people don't have the money. Yeah, people don't have the money. Like AOC is like, those guys taken to the streets are stealing loaves of bread to feed. F no, they're stealing electronics equipment and snowboards, you fucking bitch. Like, come on. You and can you cook. grew up without money, right? I grew up without money and, and I grew up without food. Yeah. And I was on the, the program and that just meant I was a fucking loser. And by <laughs> the way, the school was serving up slop. They were serving up slop. Breakfast was frozen pancakes in a weird container of, of of syrup that was just corn syrup and orange coloring, you know, and fake butter. Like yeah, there a fruit, feed fruit cup people. that was all all it's, it's sugar. A, like it was, it was fish sticks that were frozen for fourteen breakfast? years ago. No, that was the lunch program. So for breakfast, did you show up <laughs> early? Did the 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 poor bus? pick you up? Was there a bus for poor kids that went around, picked up the poor kids, brought them I, for breakfast? <clears throat> I lived across the street from uh, from the school. Oh. So I could go there Boy, you were poor. Early. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't know it was that bad. <laughs> I could go wow. there early and get the you know, the free pancakes with the, the shit. And the, everything was slop. Everything was like millet, institution grade. Junk. I have a hundred questions. And then yeah. would you leave there, go out the back door, sneak around the block, and then enter the school like one of the the more successful kid family, <laughs> kid person? Like, you know what I mean? There must have been shame. I would I would <laughs> hop the fence because the, I lived across the street from the school on the corner, the furthest away from the front of the school. Oh, so there's no entry. I would have to walk all the way around, like two city blocks, just to get to the front part. So I would oftentimes yeah. just go over the fence in the corner by the basketball courts. Um, I remember a couple of things. I remember having the lunch tickets. I remember being so grossed out by like the hot dogs and the hamburgers that even at, at 11, I was like, mm -hmm. ugh, not that. Everything was the wrong color and the wrong shape. You know, pizza was square. Right. Hot dogs were these weird kind of milky beige Ugh. color. Like everything was a fucking shit show. And all I remember is there was a, we had a lunch aide who was a high school student, as I recall now. She was probably 17 when we were like 11. And she just had a massive rack. <laughs> and every time. So that's why you went. Every time we saw her. Yeah. Me and my friends, we would hold our hands out in front of, you know, cup our hands and hold them <laughs> oh, out in front of geez. us. And we would just go, ba 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 And we put our hands out like a double D bra. Yeah. And at some point, we got into trouble. Yeah. That, that's How old are you doing long. this? Is this high school? No. This, yep. I'm telling you, this is yeah. like 11. Yeah. So was there shame in having this meal ticket? Or did you keep a secret from people? I, I remember you it know, was we, didn't, weird. we did a nice lot thing. of, I remember going to the church for like spaghetti night. You know, my mom was on food stamps and welfare. And if the church was doing spaghetti night, you know, we'd go to the church. But do you like, like lie to your friends about what you're doing or do you keep it a secret? I didn't, I, it didn't bother me the the the. He didn't lunch know program. He didn't I know did. Better. I mean, I understood we didn't have any money and it was free. I've sort of gotten indoctrinated into like, hey, man, it's free. Did you yeah. ever ask your parents, like, did they have to like give tax documents to qualify for this? Or were they just sort of like, yeah, we live across the street. We're not Look doing the house. well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, they didn't. My The only time I, I was brought shame, like, like where I was really shamed out mm -hmm. is... I played Pop Warner football the whole time. And and the Pop Warner football kids, a lot of them were kind of winner kids. They were up in the hills. Yeah. Our coach was Duke Gallagher. Yeah, Duke really Gallagher's man. son was Danny, and he had a yeah. cute daughter named Kelly, and the family was together, and he drove like the big country squire wagon with the yeah. window that rolled down. You know, you could take the window and the tailgate and roll it down mm. while sitting in the passenger seat. You know, like... Uh, Their neighbors insane. Them pounders. insane. Yeah. They were they were winners. These yeah. people, and I didn't like them to know that I came from chaos and losers. Yeah. Plus, I was really good, and they liked me. You know, mm -hmm. so I would hang out with the the winners, and then at one point, 
I don't know, like season three or something. My mom was, it, it was like 20 bucks a month uh-huh. or 20 bucks a year to play for the East Valley Trojans, you know? And she was like, just go in there and tell them we need a scholarship because we're broke. And I was oh. like, Ugh. I mean, first off, it's 20 bucks. I get a full pads and uniform and I'm gone every weekend for the next, you know, 11 <laughs> weeks. And Duke Gallagher picks me up. You know, in the and car. takes me, yeah, and then takes me back. Like, this is the best 20 bucks you ever had. And Duke Gallagher will buy McDonald's, like, if we win. Uh-huh. And Mrs. Whitman will give the orange slices out. Like, this is the best 20 bucks yeah, as a right. fucking fan. I'll be at practice three days a week. I'll walk there. Like, I'm yeah. not even going to be home. For 20 bucks, you get, deal. you get three months of me <laughs> eating outside yeah. of the house and not bothering your haggard ass. And they're like, just tell them, you know, we need a scholarship. <laughs> and I was like, I... It, uh, I don't want to go to Scott Whitman's mom and tell her. Yeah. I was embarrassed. I was totally humiliated. What do you think? Did you ever catch your parents doing stuff with money that you resented? No, they didn't have money. So they weren't gambling? There wasn't no. drugs or alcohol? No. No. or There was no money. So what did your parents do? Uh, well, my mom was, you know, welfare and food stamps. And my dad worked like a little bit, uh, like substitute school teaching, you know, like that. They were kind separated. Of stuff. Yeah. And yeah. how many kids do they have? Two. That's it, huh? That's it. Just you and your sister that you don't want to walk with on the weekends. That's right. Because you can't figure out which house you're you at. <laughs> you got to find me before yeah. I'm walking, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. 50 chance. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So there was no, there was no, it wasn't like, oh, mom, you're, I'm on the food uh, lunch program and you just bought a set of pewter swizzle sticks yeah. on eBay or something. It was like, no, no, she didn't buy anything. She didn't have anything. Yeah. Nobody bought anything. Nobody had anything. I discussed this on my podcast yesterday, and I think you, you, you remind me of it right now, because I get the sense that you're very proud of your accomplishments, and you look down on people that maybe had a leg up and didn't go as far as you did, right? Um... No, I look down on people that needed a leg up, were handed a leg up, and slapped the leg. Okay. that's I've met a lot of those people. Do you believe in free will? Yes. You believe that we make our own decisions, right? Yeah. Okay, because I read an article by this Dr. Sapolsky in the New York Times, and he claims there is no free will. Mm. That all of our actions, including what you're wearing today— you couldn't choose. Me being here today, I didn't choose being here. It's all it, predetermined. Predetermined by biology, the circumstances in your life, and your molecules con- connecting with well, other molecules. Well, I, 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 I believe in that to a certain extent that I've had a lot of people in my life where I just went, look, you hit the jackpot. You know me. I'm going to take care of you. I can help you. I can introduce you to people. I can make your career. I can give you a life that most people can't dream of. And they go, fuck you. Really? That, Who did that? Oh, many. Please make that offer to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to make you a Swifty bracelet yeah, I'll after take, this. I'll take whatever. So back to Halloween. Yeah. I believe that taking your kids and moving them essentially bussing them to a nice neighborhood where they can get full-size candy bars and the occasional pounder. Oh, yeah. Uh, All that does is send a negative message to your kids, Mm -hmm. which is you need to get your own neighborhood together. You Mm -hmm. need to see the people in your neighborhood. You need to judge them, and you need to aspire to earn your way out of this, not go and pick up stuff. And by the way, I can tell the people who are being dropped off and muled to my neighborhood. See, that's what I thats what I thought I, was funny that I thought you could have hit upon. Because you said there's actually like a van shows up and the kids pile out? Yeah, there's a, there's a, I mean, there's several vans, but the number one reason I can tell, because it's at night. Yeah. And I was heading out to do a show somewhere and I, you know, yeah, I don't know people's, I don't even know people's ethnicity or whatever at night when I'm driving, but the moms were big. Oh. And uh, not my in Malibu. My ma- not in got, Malibu. Got no big mamas. No. <laughs> no. And this was in La Cunada. There's no big mamas there wow. either. The poor people are the big people. So now. I thought it's f- they're bussing in like these are migrant trick or treaters. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? This is mm-hmm. Florida sending. In fact, you looked at the license plate of the van, and it's a Florida license plate. Yeah, they're coming in from yeah. Florida. Florida's bussing in. That's right. They're migrant trick-or-treaters. Yeah. I thought, that's right up your it's alley. It's Reese's Pieces picking season. Yeah. And they've come to capitalize. Yeah. 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 
I, uh, I I've been seeing it for a while. I don't like it. Everyone thinks I'm an asshole. But why don't uh, you uh, why don't you ID them? I should. And why don't you close the borders them. to La Quinata, however you say it? Yeah. And you have to like show you know like your driver's license that you. These actually, are un- unaccompanied minors, and I'm going to put them in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> does this does this contradict your idea of, of school choice though? Because these are kids who <clears throat> want to be able to trick or treat wherever, but they have to stay in their own neighborhood, stay in their own district. Well, school choice first thing the first thing of school choice is just competition. I just want competition. LA Unified spends tons of money per student, has no competition, and the test scores are through the fucking floorboards. They don't have competition. I've said it a million times. If there was no Mexican food in Los Angeles, it was just government taco. The government did the tacos. Mm-hmm. The, that was, all you could do is go to a government outlet and buy a taco. How fucking bad would these tacos be? And how fast would they go south? And then how expensive would they be for the world's shittiest taco? So... LA Unified is mobbed up. It's a union. They elect the governor. They elect everybody. And then they get their way. And that's what happened with shutdowns and COVID and everything else. But they have no competition. So they underachieve. They keep asking for more money. And they don't want charter schools because they don't want competition. Charter schools, they don't have unions. The teachers aren't unions. Good teachers get paid more. If you're a shit teacher, they'll clip you. That's the way... It should be. That's that's what it creates. That's everything is created by competition. And then somehow we've carved out this one little piece, which is the most important, which is educating kids. And we want no competition. And why is it that all these teachers unions and uh, school boards? Uh, why are they so incredibly against charter schools? Why? If all they do is love the poor brown and black kids and it serves the poor brown and black kids, why are they violently against Those it? Those are the ones that get, that get clipped. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's why. So I want that. I want competition. And I want you to see your own neighborhood. And I don't want the message of, here's some rich dude, go get shit from him. What if it's not safe in their neighborhoods to trick and treat? That's part of living in a shit neighborhood. You got to get together. You need, uh, you need the... Uh, the, the parents, you need the, 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 what do they call it? The lookout, the neighborhood, neighborhood watch. watch. Like yeah. you, need to, you need to get your neighborhood together. Let me tell you something, how we trick-or-treated, okay? Because mm. I, it pitch dark, mm-hmm. no flashlights. In Boston? Yeah, outside of Boston, in a suburb of Lexington. Pit, we were all black costumes. There were no flashlights. Mm-hmm. And occasionally, somebody would run up and take your entire bag of what you <laughs> triggered and just run off with it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. Now well, maybe Dawson can find it. Um, I just was had a conversation with uh, Dan Aykroyd. I walked him to his car. Well, let me tell you, how, how well did that go, Dan Aykroyd, that interview? Well, good enough for a hug. Really? When does that air? Is it out? It'll it's going to air Wednesday. It'll be Wednesday. That was a great interview. I really enjoyed the what guy. What made it so good? Because he keeps coming to ask. He keeps trying to come on my podcast. Don't I'm saying, no. do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what, is, what makes him such a great interview? Uh, it's, 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 it's what I brought out in him. Yeah, you, you are know the, what I mean? the yeah. master. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you really are. <laughs> uh, there was, I forgot about this bit, but he used to do, Dawson, you can look for it, Irving Mainway, I think. And he would go on these consumer shows and he would sell Halloween outfits and and everything was super dangerous. And he would go on with Jane Curtin and she would be like the consumer advocate. And he, he what you reminded me is he'd go, uh, yeah, well, we have there. Here's uh, Johnny Invisible Pedestrian. It's just a black front. And she'd go, that is the monk. Oh, it's 1995. Come on. And it was this pitch guy selling super dangerous shit. It's Irwin. Irwin Mainway. Irwin. Shit. I was way off of my Irving. I know. Irwin Mainway. It's, it's, a, it's a Dan Aykroyd character that nobody remembers. And he would just go in there and pitch the most dangerous shit. And there's a Halloween version. Well, let's see. If we'll... <laughs> All right. You got it. Yeah, that's funny. I forgot about that character. Erwin Mainway. Love his accent. Um, we have a Eric Schwartz wrote us a song about hash browns. Yeah, so you were talking about hash browns with him the other week. Yes. And, um, he hasn't been able to stop thinking about that <laughs> argument. He's a cube potatoes guy, but for health reasons. What kind of potato? Cubed breakfast potato. Yeah. Versus hash browns. 
Which are which one of the hash? I like the the home style. <laughs> this is why I don't walk into the car. Oh, yeah. <laughs> More than hash browns. Hash browns are the, the shredded ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no. Too much oil. Okay. Oh, too oh much. God, forget about go. the oil. Too much. Like they come out completely not browned on either side. They're mushy. They're do you off. like cubed ones or what do you no, like? No, no, cubed. There's no heart in cubed. I, I, it's first mathematical. Off, cubes, cubes shouldn't be an option. They are, but what do you like? Have you ever heard my bit about all the different shaped French fries? <clears throat> no. Okay. Well, I. I, I <laughs> how do you like you. your I breakfast? You. How do you like your breakfast potatoes? Well, it's all an extension of this, and how many different shapes of potatoes do we need? Right. I'm on, I'm on to this. I've done this. I, I've, I agree. I've covered with you. this to to extent. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, potatoes, potato. I I agree. But I think we can all agree on the best fry. Best French fry. Best French fry. What is it? It's McDonald's-sized fries. When they start getting into those big quarters with the skin on and all that stuff. Wedge. Even, wedge. Wedge. Wedge some skin. Wedge uh, no skin. Wedge is, I'm not going to do the whole bit, but I name them. You like the wedge? What's your favorite fry? Uh, you're you're going to be upset. Steak fry. Ugh. A little yeah. too thick. A little too thick. Yeah. I mean, it's okay. Right. We don't need shoestring. We don't need curly. We don't need anything. We just need a good fry. Waffle? A fry. Waffle. Well, I don't want to do the bit. I know all don't of them. I, I okay. want to get to the punchline. Unnecessary. Got to pay to see What do you want for them. breakfast in the potato I want. I want home style. I want it like hand cut, some skin on there. I want them browned right. I want <laughs> Himalayan sea salt. I get I it. I can't take, I'm sorry, ever since I had this pink Himalayan sea salt, I'm not going back to the regular stuff. Right. You know where you can find that salt? It's just saltier. Jay Leno's shop. It was Jay the Le- first time I saw it. I know, you're his hero. Yeah. yeah. Boy, that bothered you. <laughs> There's been a rip. Ever comes right up to me. I'm with Adam. With Doesn't me. even notice Adam. Walks right past me. He's, Leno. Adam's right there, walks right past Adam, comes right up to me, and he says... You're going to be the funniest one on the show tonight. Adam's sitting right there. Oh, How am I supposed to react? I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> he's not wrong. But what do I, you know? Oh, Leno laid it on thick. Oh, Clearly felt bad. bad. He's my buddy. Yeah. Still, t- that guy texts more than you do. What? He calls more than you do. What's no. a Leno text like? Yeah. L- Leno is very articulate. He's very supportive. He's nice. <clears throat> There's a lot of like off-air activity. He's been very. He's the opposite of you. Well, that's the first time I saw the Himalayan salt. Yeah. Years ago. Yeah, it's pink. Right? It wasn't years, years ago. Salt. It was a couple years months ago. A couple years months ago. ago. Years ago. All right. <laughs> so you want Many years non-hash brown potatoes. You're doing a Halloween bit on November 2nd. So yeah. don't come after me for my pink Himalayan sea oh, salt. Oh, wait. When was Halloween? The, the it's usually first, the 31st. 31st. Yeah. All right. It, it changes. It's it just... It, it, <laughs> it, just <laughs> it was two days later. Okay. I'm just saying it seemed... A little desperate, like a reach. Like, can I get? It's like w- two days after Labor Day, wearing white. Can I get one? Can I sneak in one? Oh, by the way, Halloween was last week. This is Cor- this is oh, Corolla. Halloween Kimmel's was club. on Monday. Can, I mean, this is Thursday. I mean, right? oh no, Halloween was on Tuesday. Right. Halloween was on Tuesday. Orny says the bit stale by Thursday God. of the same <laughs> week. It was a the same stinker. week. What a stinker. All right, but let me I say, call let's it a segment on Let's it just, just say the Super Bowl was on a Sunday. Yeah. No Super Bowl comments on a Tuesday? If you're referencing something that happened specifically at that Super Bowl, yes. But if it's a generic, like, well, it's the one day the I man gets to be a man I said my neighborhood bit. in my <laughs> neighborhood. That's a direct reference. Yeah. I, all I know is when the minute you went into it, I saw audience members picking up their phones. Burnt out. Check it. They were done. So they were out. If, and that was up top. If Princess Di was killed in that tunnel on a Wednesday. Yeah. No fly zone on Friday? No. Cause if he, you're on stage? No, because here's the thing. You're sneaking that bit in every year. That is your go you, you have a calendar reminder that comes up that goes, don't forget to do your Halloween bit. Never it's, done I'm sure it you stage. start it October 1st. Oh, I and, milk it. And milk uh, it. Yes. Go, oh, Halloween's coming up. Same mm. thing every year. Mm-hmm. The, the poor kids come into my neighbor. Yeah, you get right. about six weeks out of that. I yeah. know. I milk six weeks. I know. Yeah. Whereas French fries have a very small window. (laughs) Fries. This is evergreen. I like evergreen. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. Look, we need to take a break. We'll play the hash brown song that Eric Schwartz came up with, and we'll do that right after this.
You're about to hear a preview of The Jordan Harbinger Show from an episode all about sand. You heard me, sand. It's actually quite fascinating. It's the most consumed natural resource that the world is actually running out of. Every year, we use enough concrete to build a wall 90 feet high and 90 feet across right the way around the planet at the equator. We're fully eclipsing the rate of creation here you're probably sitting in a building made of just a huge pile of sand. And all the roads connecting all those buildings, also made out of sand. The glass, the windows in all those buildings, also made of sand. The microchips that power our computers, our cell phones, all of our other digital goodies, also made from sand. So without sand, there's no modern civilization. And the craziest thing about it is, we are starting to run out. For more on why sand is the next scarce resource and crazy stories about sand pirates on the black market for sand, check out episode 97 of The Jordan Harbinger Show. In honor of Jim Carolla's 92nd birthday, here's a list of all the things Adam Carolla will do before he dies. Have a celebrity use his nickname in an interview. De Niro said, working with Ace was great. Just one of the things Adam will do before he dies. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla show. All right. So, oh God, I'm trying to. Hey, where do you come down on this? Uh oh. I, I would like. Trouble. I would like a set. No. Yeah. Here we go. I, no, I would like a rule. Yeah. Okay. I did notice this. You know, I loved Aykroyd. Walked him to the truck. Yeah, him. yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. But he did do something that bothers me with celebrities. Which is... Who's the celebrity that he did something with? You? Celebrities, not with me. Okay. When they refer to celebrities they've worked with. Let's see if we can get a consensus. Here. I got it already. Okay. Uh, here it is. Robbie. Who? De Niro. That, that thing, right? Right. But here's the deal. <clears throat> I don't mind if it goes one way. Like, you know him as Robert De Niro. We know him as Robert De Niro. But if you did a movie with him, you can call him Bobby De Niro. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. But on the ones who have the short names, they lengthen them. Oh. And now, wait a minute now. Mm -hmm. Because I get the, you know him as Edward, and I just call him (coughs) Eddie Norton or whatever. I get that. But now you're going longer. Right. Because, because... um, Ackroyd was telling a story about Fran Drescher. Yeah. And he kept calling her Franny. Oh, boy. Now you're adding letters. Yeah. I, it's one or the other. Well, we, you know, we, we'll shorten. I'll go along with shortening. Yeah. But we can't lengthen. Well, we, or nothing at all. Well, or we, it's the same name. I'm sorry. Keep it to the road. But we, we discovered uh, after he died that he was Maddie LeBlanc. Oh, right. Remember that? Wait, not. Who died? <laughs> Matthew Matt, Perry. Matt oh, yeah, it was Maddie Perry. Right. Oh, it was Matt. I just did not. I, I wasn't right. supposed to say it. But, uh, right. yeah, Matt. Matt Perry became Maddie Perry. Yes. It drove me nuts. I don't like it because it's you just saying, I have a different relationship yeah. with yeah. this person than you do. Yeah. And if you called them this, then they would be put off by it. But I can yeah, do it. Yeah, I, I agree. And I've but do this- we agree that shortening is fine, but you can't lengthen I agree. Yeah, I've had this conversation with Jim Kimmel. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we've gone over this before, and uh, uh, <laughs> Dr. Uh, Andrew. Uh, all right. <laughs> Dr. Andrew. <laughs> you should call him that just to really get under his Drew's skin. Drew's not even his first name. What is it? What is he? His, I think it's his middle name. It is his middle name, yeah. Yeah. All right. Should we let's play the hash brown song? Because you and comedian Eric Schwartz may have landed on the same page. He's another cubed. Guy. I'm not cute. Listen, nobody's more upset about it than I. If I'm ever invited back, yeah. I'm bringing some goddamn hash browns. That's well, there's got, only that's one condition to your return. Yeah. That's with the hash browns. Yeah. Oh, man. Nice job. And yeah, go ahead and uh, you, why? Can, you can confirm Ackroyd for next uh, Thursday. Oh, we're talking yeah. we're booking. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry. We're playing a yeah, song. Danny. Right? Yeah, confirm Danny, please. Danny. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Eric Schwartz. Nice Eric job. Schwartz. Uh, and this is why we should have little to no 
reverence for Weird Al. Everyone's blown out of the water. They're like, my balona, ba da da ba da ba ba, like a surgeon. Like, if I was in the room and he's like, I want to do like a virgin, but I'm doing like a surgeon, I'd be like, it'd be better off, do sturgeon, do the fucking fish. Like, okay, I, I got nothing against Weird Al. We should not care about Weird like Al. It. We like should you do not something care about Weird Al. I was like, I love Weird Al. I love Weird Al. First off, Eric Schwartz just went out and shit out a song that was 10 times better than fucking Weird Al could do on his best day. What is this? Why, why do we love Weird Al? What, what is, he's hackneyed. His shit is fucking lame. His, his rhymes are sort of stupid. Like, he's okay. I'm just saying, why do we have to have reverence mm. for Weird Al? He doesn't do anything. He does, he does what I could have done when I was nine. About any fucking song. But that's who it appeals to. There's an audience for that. You know, like when you were a kid. Those you, are adults you do the, who the, the double the D. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, yes. Well, he was. Ba, 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 yeah. Ba. That kid would have loved Weird Al's songs. Right. But why are 51 year olds in the fucking audience jumping up and down and cheering? Sense memory. Oh. And, and I'll tell you something. You know, he's singing about really important things, not hash browns. No, he's singing about baloney. Yeah. And surgeons. But you're also, at the same time, and, diminishing... And, and, and another one rides the bus. Yeah, but you're also diminishing uh, Schwartz's... fucking hackneyed. Okay. He's a hack. Wow. It's junk. Okay. It's just, it's it's grade school, sh- grade level but why shit. why the need to say it? Let him... That's what I'm saying. Why say it? You're not saying <laughs> anything. about you. My baloney's not smart. He's just let him live his life. I people fine. That enjoy live it. Live a quiet life as a shoe salesman who makes shitty songs at night. I don't want to. I don't want to have to see movies made about you. What did he do to Billy Jean? What was that? He did a Michael Jackson. Just beat it. Just beat, beat it. it. Just eat, eat it. it. Just eat it. Yeah. That's that's up there with hash brown or, or go go. <laughs> maybe it, there's only eat it. Make yourself a plate and I, I have a sandwich yeah. and eat it. But it's maybe Schwartz is that good. He is, but I'm just saying. All right, here's I want to live in a land. Here's why I live in a land. Yeah, I don't care about Weird Al. Nobody should think he's talented. Okay, he's weird. He's funny. He's cute. It's fine. No harm, no foul. But he shouldn't be selling. Tons of tickets. This is going to really later. annoy you. That, and I don't want to fucking hear what Heidi Klum has to say about anything. Okay, those are my two, those are my two, two worlds. Totally, she different. says nothing. Yeah. about anything ever. And there's always someone pushing a microphone in her face on those entertainment shows. Oh, Heidi Klum, she wants to, she's doing a take on a Halloween yeah. outfit. I, I don't. Her, I, her Halloween costumes are epic. I know because she's got nothing to say. This is going to blow your mind. This is going to blow your mind. It's going to upset you. <laughs> Even more than I am about Weird Al. Weird Al is Taylor Swift's favorite comedian. No. Yep. You yep. gotta. Yep. Dawson, confirm it. Put no it up weird. on the screen. <laughs> no way. She loves his mir- no. uh, Yes, his musical sense is. Uh, yes. <laughs> he does my baloney. What else? My is he my balona. My balona. He's made a fortune. What are his Amish songs? Paradise. He's made a fortune. He's, he's not Amish Paradise. He's not begging his good friend uh, Jim Kimmel to work on th- off Thursday nights. <laughs> like a surgeon. What are what are his hits? Uh, first off, any one of us. Could oh, sh- Gangsters Paradise. He did a. a what? Any, any one of us could shit out any one of these songs. Amish. Put on t- Amish in Paradise. Minutes, in to Paradise. Ten minutes. Oh, instead of bad, he did fat. Yeah, I don't know. Michael Jackson can I, one. Can I tell you? Bad and fat don't even. Anyway. Let me tell you one of the obstacles. When I was in high school, I used to write parody songs that were 10 times better. Than okay, this. but let me tell you one of the obstacles that but Weird Al gay. has that, yeah. uh, that you're not considering. He has to get the rights to use these songs. Yeah. Okay? Uh, Schwartz didn't reach out to Tom Petty. He <laughs> went to the estate. <laughs> but you listen. Tom's, Tom Petty's a state. L- listen to Weird Al. He'll talk about getting Michael Jackson to allow him to cover that song. Yeah, I know. I know. It's like I there was some issue that he had with Coolio or something, as I recall. Somebody didn't want to yeah. clear it with him. I'm, I'm just saying, these are very basic, boring, weak lyrics to songs that already existed. He, he should be tolerated, but he shouldn't be venerated. Who's venerating him? Everyone loves Weird Al. Oh, he's, I mean, if his you say, I don't, I don't get it. The, the guy's kind of sucks. It's like it's like it's a, you'll be stoned yeah. to death in this town. I'm just saying we shouldn't worship at the altar of Weird Al. He's not an artist. 
Okay. He takes songs that already exist and puts third grade lyrics to them that are very basic and hackneyed. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It does feel sometimes song parodies. And we're enjoying the song. It's the same thing that fucking Sense memory. P. Diddy does with Cashmere or something. Look, oh, I like this song. Like, you like Cashmere. You like Led Zeppelin. <laughs> That's what you're enjoying. Yeah. You're enjoying a great pop song with shit lyrics. That's we got to go to a Weird Al concert, you and I'd I. I'd go. Yeah, that'd be fun. <laughs> Let's if we, do if that. we get backstage, we have to get not backstage. a word of this. No, I would never mention this. Yeah, good. No, that would be sort of our thing. Yeah. That, you know, we're goofing on him. Yeah, when I'm talking, I know him well, so I call him Weirdo. Yeah. Al, I <laughs> lengthen. Yeah, Weirdo. <laughs> weirdo Al. All right, should we do, well, you got some news there? Chris? Yeah. We what is it, all news. these lines? Do these people want to talk to us? No, this is just messages no, on my screen. No, the blinking reds Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know. No, no, they're not. No, I don't no. know why they're blinking. No one wants to talk. To I'd like to take a call. <laughs> oh, Drew's don't. first name is David, by the way. Da- so how did he become Dr. Drew? Uh, oh, oh uh, here's here. Oh, here's that. Ooh. He went with his middle name because when he first started, he was on the radio and he was like talking about sex and AIDS and stuff. And he, he thought he was going to get in some sort of trouble with his hospital or something that he didn't want right. to get outed when he was in his internship and working to be a physician and stuff, he just didn't want people knowing yeah. he was on talking about AIDS and, you know, right. fucking 69 ing and stuff yeah. in the middle of the night. Um, this is perfect. This is perfect. The only person who always turns down weird Al is Prince because Prince was a colossal douche <laughs> and weird Al is a hack. So good. Wait the, a both of them are perfect. It's perfectly consistent that it would be Prince, because Prince <laughs> oh. is the other guy. He was a colossal douche that nobody, everyone has to worship at the altar of Prince, yeah. who was good or talented, yeah. but most of his songs sucked badly. I, I bet Weird Al has won a Grammy. Oh, I'm sure of it. I'm sure. Of yeah, it. he's a Grammy winner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Now, news. All right. So... Um, you, we didn't talk about this last week, but the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the 2023 induction ceremony. Uh, and, and I watched some of it. It's, it's long. It, it actually streamed on Disney Plus this year. Usually it goes on HBO. Um, so just a reminder, some of the inductees, Kate Bush, Sheryl Crow, Missy Elliott, George Michael, Willie Nelson, The Spinners. Mm-hmm. Mm, the Spinners are great. Yeah, Shaka Khan, Link Ray, Khan. DJ Cool. Shaka Khan. I don't know who DJ Shaka Cool is. but. Al- Go get the best of the spinners. You Don will Cornelius. not be disappointed. Yeah. So Don, Don Cornelius. Don Cornelius. He was. He was. Uh, he got an award too was, from um, Soul Train. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but everyone's talking about Tom Morello's speech because Rage Against the Machine Such was inducted, a douche. and it was weird because uh, during the acceptance speech, it was just Tom Morello. The uh, the rest of the band didn't didn't show up. How many hits does Rage Against the Machine have versus a bunch of bands that aren't in with a bunch of hits but anyway we can listen to tom morella he's a douche fans often ask but what can i do well let's start with these three things one dream big and don't settle two aim for the world you really want without compromise or apology and three don't wait for us rage is not here but you are the job we set out to do is not over now you're the ones that must testify if you've got a boss, join a union. If you're a student, start an underground paper. If you're an anarchist, throw a brick. If you're a soldier or a cop, follow your conscience, not your orders. Uh, if you're he's a out, fucking you idiot. Is what is a fuck? I don't know what the fuck he's talking it's about. It's all, he's an asshole. Why does everybody have to have a mission? You're an, you're an anarchist, throw a brick. At, at what? Yeah. The fucking Jew or a storefront or who are we throwing the brick at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this... People don't realize the time we're living in. There's nothing going on, and we have a bunch of assholes going, you got to stand up. you got to be heard. Yeah. Or you can go the fuck to work and, and take care of your family, or you can do whatever the fuck you want. And he wants the college kids to start a paper. They just want to get laid. That's right. <laughs> they want to do a fucking paper. paper. They want to do a funnel and get their dicks up. But the thing is, why does... He's an ass. He's an idiot. Have you met him? No. I, I, I Look, I don't believe he believes this shit. I think he just... It's all part of the persona of the band. We're raging against the machine. (laughs) We started it. You guys have to finish. You started what? What what do we talk about? They never get specific. You know, it's always like a lot of oppression, a lot of voices. Who are we talking about? Who's doing the oppressing? What's going on? (laughs) I live in California. Who's who's at the helm? 
here, who's doing all the oppressing? Who's holding down all the people of whatever? If you're an advocate college, she's fucking gas bag. Inspiring as hell. It's just not the place to do it. Just accept your award. Well, sing your song. No, but he's a poser who's in a band where they're going to change things. So he has to sound like that. Right. Okay. And he, yeah, and he explained that the rest of the band didn't show up for their own personal reasons of how they think, uh, what they think of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So it's just him. Um, by the way, Mark Knopfler did that when Dire Straits got inducted as well. He didn't show up. He didn't show up. Due to, quote, personal reasons, according to their basis. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, so it's, and, um, Hmm. Do you think it's exhausting for bands who create this persona to have to now commit to it whenever yes. they're, they're if they, in public? If there was a band called Rage Against Cube Potatoes, yeah. I would be front row of every really? concert. Fucking shirt up. <laughs> Big sign. You know, yeah, like, yeah, man. What do they sing? I don't even know one of their songs. They do. In the Killing name of the name. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's just poser shit. It's like, look, you're done with high school. Move the fuck on. You're 57 years old. Get the fuck on with your life. Uh, it should be stated also that Tom Morello is on the selection committee for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, well, that helps. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, I, I'm like done with these people. They're not helping. They're making things worse, and they can fuck Renegade right the off. Renegade the Funk? That, that's Gorilla them. Radio? Yeah. They don't have hits. We just said Rage Against the Machine to Orny Adams, who has his pulse on the finger, or the he, finger on the pulse yeah. of modern music. He's on Teen Wolf. And I mean, he has yeah. no fucking idea what, who they are. Yeah, I don't. Okay, well, maybe, there you go. So maybe not Rock and Roll Hall of Fame material if you don't know who they are. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. there's a lot of people that haven't been inducted that should be. Oh, of course. Of course. Inducted. But and not, there's a lot of people that haven't been abducted that should be abducted. <laughs> they're not poser, <laughs> angry douchebags like he is. Right. So it's like, it, look, it's like going goth. You go goth, and now at some point it's noon on a Wednesday, and you got to go to the fucking supermarket. You have to fucking put all yep. the eyeliner on yep. and shit. That's what he has to do. He has to pretend to be this guy. Right. You advance if we come in a love line and have to, once the mic's heat up, they'd have to turn on their persona and, right. Just, right. and well, be dicks. Right. And, yeah. Uh, but what is he, if you're an anarchist, throw a brick. Okay. Yeah. At who? Who are you throwing the brick at? At, at the system, at the machine, what machine are we talking it's not about? A metaphorical. Pick. Who's in oh, charge? Yeah. What's the fucking plan? Yeah. That they started paper. He's so, so fucking. It, it, people don't real. People buy into this shit. That's the scary part. Well, it's, it's a douche. A lot of it is just the cadence of it too. Like yeah. when Lauren she Hill did, was late did, and she got she riled everybody up. Like, yeah. hey, you should be happy I'm on this stage. Mm-hmm. And just everyone's cheering after that. It's just yeah. two hours late. It's these personas. It's like I always felt bad for Gilbert Godfrey. Mm-hmm. That he had to do that voice oh, all yeah. the time, and he had a real voice. Yeah, they have that. Re- Howard Stern played that recording of him leaving a message in his real voice, and sounded yeah, nothing. Yeah, well, like. yeah, Bobcat got into this too. Oh, right, he did Bobcat, you know, yeah. and then everyone wants him to do Bobcat, but then he doesn't want to do right. Bobcat. You know, that's that's the problem with the fake persona. Right, you, you, at some point you get older, and you have to you have to do it. You know, you have to kind of. Dress and you know the the woman who played Ellie Mae Clampett in the Beverly Hillbillies. At some point, she was seventy three and had to put on the super tight shorts with the rope <laughs> belt and the shirt tied uh, to knot, and hair big blonde hair, and be Ellie Mae yeah. at every boat show and car show. She had to be Ellie Mae. Yeah, it's good when you when you're twenty eight. Right. It's not good when you're seventy three. Exactly. All right. He's a douche. He's oh, well. Um, speaking of douches, I, at least what I hear, Jared Leto is in the news right now. <laughs> um, he it, he has been seen climbing the Empire State Building. Oh at, wow! As of uh, this morning that we were rec- we're recording this, there's there's video of it. Supposedly, it's in promotion for his new Thirty Seconds to Mars album. Mm-hmm. You can play it. Yeah, just uh, so it'll zoom in. So he's wearing a red jumpsuit. Mm-hmm. Is he dressed as Santa? Scaling the Empire State Building. Has some nice footage there. He does look like Santa, yeah. He wants to be seen. He wants to be seen. So this is a... Uh... I wish he'd just throw a brick through yeah. that window. Or start a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, start a newspaper. <laughs> or or form, a newspaper. Uh, form a union. Yeah. Uh, that's, if you work, form a union. Yeah, that's what we have, douche. We have the teachers unions. They're the reason they shut the fucking schools down for a year and a half, you retard. Right. Jesus Christ. Leto had a safety rope there that was also red. Shouldn't have been red. It should be a color of the Empire State. Should building, be gray. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because when you you pick the one picture where you can't see the safety rope, but when you see his safety rope, his safety rope is red, and he should have went with a black or gray. Agreed. Gray. So it wouldn't pop. 
I mean, yeah. you know, it's not like he's saying he's doing without the rope, but I'm saying I don't want to see the rope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? In the color department, here's something that drives me nuts, Orny Adams. Yes. Has nothing to do with Jared Leto, but tangentially, it's it, it's sort of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I watched a movie, and, 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 and this is true for everything. everything. I watched the movie, the documentary series, it was called like the 100-foot wave, right? Mm-hmm. And it was about a guy's quest to ride a 100-foot wave. Uh, maybe it was on Netflix. I can't remember. Hulu, whatever. Uh, HBO. HBO. Enjoyable, yeah. right? Now, a lot of the problem with riding the 100-foot wave was, was danger. And the problem is, is when they took off on an 80-foot wave and they ate shit, they, they couldn't be found. You know what I mean? It's a lot of like going under, and it's a lot of like helicopters and guys on jet skis, s- jet skis going around going, where is he? Where is yeah. he? Like, uh, has he come up? Has he come up? Has he come up? Every single one, and, and, and they do it in a part of the world. It wasn't where you'd think. It wasn't like Maui or the Wedge Asian out here or anything. This, no, it wasn't that. It was Dawson. Portugal. Portugal. Yeah, Asian country. Yeah, yeah Asian country. Yeah, well, it's Japanese <laughs> over there. So the biggest problem was finding these guys once they ate shit on the way. Yeah. And, and it was always gloomy and overcast. And every one of these guys wore a black wetsuit and a dark blue life preserver right that blended perfectly with the ocean not a one of them wore like an orange (laughs) cap you know wetsuit hat or something please or an orange thing every wetsuit and by the way i have a life preserver at my my do in one of my homes oh my god (laughs) really yeah taylor (laughs) brought it by no in malibu you want you know what color the life preserver is orange the exact color of the ocean oh no because they come in like dark blue, like that's I didn't they order used to be it. Orange. But, well, they are like if you're in the Coast Guard and shit. Right, I, I am. Might, yeah. But, but the but the point is, is why do you even sell a life preserver that's the exact same color as the 200 miles of surrounding <laughs> ocean why that does, you're in? Why don't they have a beacon on them or something that if you're under well, a certain you, pressure, you, it shoots you up like an inflatable? Well, the, it, it, it's wouldn't always, that make it more fun if you saw them pop out of the of water? Course. It's always in whack a mole. You go right at the no, head. you catch them with a net. <laughs> the point is, is why would you wear a black wetsuit and a dark blue life preserver when you're looking to be found? There's not a buddy there that has to be nobody reason. raised their hand and went, hello, can we go with some orange? How about these people that are eaten by sharks every year that are swimming around seals in the black wetsuits? They right. dress like seals. They dress like and seals. And it's shocking. They, that they dress up like seals. Then they come to my neighborhood. That's right. And they want my full-size yeah. Snickers bars. That's right. I've got to teach them a lesson. Oh, my God. You know what I was just thinking? Whatever happened to that stage? Do you still have that stage? <laughs> no, I told you. It's gone. Damn no. It. I said gone. <laughs> you know, this reminds me. I haven't told this story in a million years. But when I was doing a, a early, one of my first TV show pilots was called Ordinary Extraordinary. Mm. It was the news of the extraordinary. And it was going to be one of those, like, those crazy people. Like or a those green wacky screen show or something. God, I was doing the news desk of the, the news of the extraordinary. Yeah. And it was like, they had these 70s shows where they had, like, Fran Tarkington and, and uh, Byron Allen, uh, Skip Stevenson, and yeah. remember Skip Stevenson, yeah. and like the new, and they're like those. That's incredible, or crazy people. It's a stupid set thing where they're going. This guy was able to smoke fifteen cigars at once. You know, like it was just sort of yeah. stupid yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they tried to like revamp that genre in like nineteen ninety six or something, and they wanted me to be nice. part of the whatever. Yeah, and. It was me. You were hot for a while. Yeah, I had heat. <laughs> me and me and John Ritter. Oh wow! And Leanza Coronet, who was you know Miss Florida or something, Miss USA. I think she died early or something. Says so her, John, and her are like the main. I'm doing the news. John you know? Ritter was one of the best. Oh, the greatest ever was the plane flight. We did this thing in Orlando. I sat next to him on the flight at Johnny LAX. Johnny Ritter. It was a great day. He just, a book just came out 
a, keeps messing up. A book. Oh, Johnny. Sorry, Johnny. Sorry, you're right. Sorry. You're right, Johnny. Ritter. Sorry, I don't mean to correct you. We'll, we'll take that out. Johnny post. Ritter. You're right. Yeah. But he he should have been Johnny Ritter. That, yeah. that Johnny Ritter than, sounds awesome. That's yeah, a quarterback. his dad was Tex Ritter. Wow, the country really? singer. Yeah, it's a good name. And he just a, the book just came out where the chick was talking about all the celebrities she'd fucked, oh. and he had a chapter. John Ritter. Yeah. Wow, I never I saw him as asexual. You didn't see enough Three's Company, bro. Mm. Well, I think I sh- didn't he play a gay character? Well, he played a gay character, so he could come and knock on my door. Oh, so you know, the have... best part was when uh, he w- goes by a woman. He's on the bike and he and he falls. Yeah, because he's cause... checking her ass yeah, out. But it's the worst fall. Yeah, did but they that only ain't do gay. one take? They did one take. <laughs> did it, like they didn't go. Hey, could you fall more realistically? No, I mean, it's... <laughs> they didn't care back then. So Ritter. And thank God the strike is over so we can discuss this. Right, right. Yeah, Ritter had just gotten outed in this book. But the problem with the book was he was done. He was divorced mm-hmm. from his first wife, but he just was dating the woman he would marry second. Oh. And the timeline didn't work out, oh. meaning it was like, hey, Four months after we were dating, oh. or two years after we were dating, mm. you did go to New York, and you did the whole thing was like chronicled out, you know. So he was kind of yeah. in a mood, oh. you know what I mean? Because chicks can't do math except for they can yeah. do that math. Relationship they math. They do ma- relationship they math. They can do they, the timeline. Oh, they're they're <laughs> Chinese chess champs when it comes to that kind of math. <laughs> oh yeah, all the other kind of math can't be done. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that kind. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, wow. you were going to New York on the 26th of February. That was uh, 1994. Yep, I got the whole calendar. And they here. ask really calm. Like, a guy would be yelling at this point and or doesn't want to know the answer. But they ask very calm, succinct questions, and they, they corner you. Sure? And they get it out of you. Like, are you, are you sure? Like, weren't you in New York at that time? Yeah. They get you. Yeah. They get you. You'll never sleep in this town again? Was that the book? Yeah. Or did you... Why did you write on my screen and then erase it from my screen? I was trying no. to confirm some information that uh, Don Ritter had a nine and a half hour sex marathon with Lois Lee, the author. Yeah, oh, that's what, yeah, that's what it was. We, yeah. I've read the chapter. It's it's quite. It was salacious. good stuff. Yeah, mm. but the point is, is he was a you know sexual being. I didn't you realize know? this. But back to the wetsuit. Why is it black? And why is the yes. uh, why why is the life preserver the same color as the ocean that we're trying to pluck you out of? And there's yeah, there's acres of it. And we're looking for you. Why not something? When I was doing that, there was a BMX. One of the things, the big stunt for the show is a guy, one of the BMX guys back then, was going to do a double backflip on his BMX bike in studio. He's going to go down the ramp, hit it, do a double backflip. And, of course, I used to do a little BMXing, and Mm -hmm. I'm kind of mechanically inclined, and there's lots of time in between takes, and I was there for practice and everything. And I, like, walked up to him, and I was looking at his BMX bike. And his BMX bike had those what they call buddy pegs on the front and the rear axles. Those yeah. four inch knurled aluminum. Yeah, to take pegs. people out. The people would stand on it and oh. like hold you by the shoulders. I think they call them buddy pegs. Like you, you could We just called them pegs. Yeah, I just called pegs. them pegs. They're yeah. called pegs. Like you, you you would grind on them if you were. Yeah, you grind on them. Yeah. Right, because it was a BMX yeah. a freestyle BMX bike. Right. In my neighborhood everyone could afford their own bike. Yeah. <laughs> I uh so I walked up and I said, uh, what do you got the pegs on there for? Ooh. And he's like, I don't know. That's, that's yeah. the bike. And I said, yeah, but you're going to do a double back on this bike. You're not grinding on it. Right. You don't have your body on the back. And if you eat shit, one of those pegs just go right in your ribs. Mm. Oh, it'll impale you. Yeah. A lot of people don't think of that. Yeah. And he goes, I, yeah, I don't know. It's how we have the bike spread. That's weird. You know, and I go, I'd get rid of the pegs. You're totally and- right. The, like, I, He's you're a doing a double back flip. BMX. I, 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 we don't yeah. need the pegs. Uh, you get rid of a little weight, and I get rid of the pegs and just just put a nut on those axles. He's Absolutely. Like, he's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, he's up. dealing with being caught having an affair. In, I don't uh, think he cares about his <laughs> pegs. <laughs> A different guy. Oh, different guy? <laughs> different guy. I drifted. I got to be honest with okay. you. I was just thinking of questions to ask Dan Aykroyd. Yeah. And I, one of them was, and I just let me write this down. What, who was your favorite SNL cast member? Are you talking member? to Danny? Yeah, these are questions for when he's on my podcast next week. Who is your favorite SNL cast member? Okay. okay. Sorry. So the guy in rehearsal does the double back, eats shit, 
and gets one of the pegs shoved right in his oh. ribs. And I'm like, oh. uh, okay. I don't know why I... This is a long time coming. You're not from Florida. You had to come here. You have a team. This mm-hmm. is a big deal. Nobody looked he at the bike. Know this. I, this is life. This is all of life. This is my life. This is me walking up going, uh, this doesn't seem like a good idea. And then I'm going, hey, I know what I'm doing. Smash cut to him on the ground with the puncture wound in his lung. Right. Yeah. Well, as only said, it's all predetermined. It's, it's all predetermined. Pre- There's no, no I, I, I believe in free will. I disagree why with do you sell, why can you go on Amazon and buy a life preserver that is midnight blue? Yeah. Why is that the number one? Why is it the first choice that number comes Number two up? is uh, completely transparent. Why, why, can, why can I tell you why? Yeah. Why? When you're drowning... You want to look good. <laughs> you want to blend. There might oh, be no. cameras. The number, there, yeah. No, yeah. there is where there, there's a number one seller. It's not the it's not the ocean blue one. It's the one with the seaweed pattern on it. <laughs> yeah, I'm inventing a new game. And I think you you would I, I'd have you co-executive produce my name first on the title. But it's do I film or do I get involved? Is essential. So if somebody was drowning with their blue mm-hmm. life preserver, mm-hmm. do you pull out your camera and film? Or do you well, this jump is in? The, this is the big question. With everyone getting the shit beat out of them on the street, there's always the person that, that's documenting it. Right. Yeah. But what if there's nobody else around? Do you? If there's a kid, like I'm thinking, there could be like an event happening, like an old person falls off their bike. Mm-hmm. I could film it and go viral. Right. Now, do I continue to film or do I jump in and save the person? These are modern day dilemmas. Can I tell you what I think? Yeah. In battles, historically, World War II and beyond now, we have field correspondence. Like, we we have clearly marked news crew guys mm, like who are there to film, mm. but they don't get involved. Like, the, 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 the Geneva Convention is they're not going to pick up a gun and start shooting yep. at Ukrainians. But on the other hand, you're not, you can't shoot them. They're just there to document. Right. There's so much crazy fucking fighting going on. In school classrooms, yeah. in school halls, on sidewalks, with protesters, and everything. So many people filming, not getting involved. We now need to have clearly marked yeah. crews, just citizen ambassadors who just wander around filming everything, freeing up the other people to get involved. Okay. And I, That's I just, what I'm saying. Y- you, correspondence. I love we need, it. We need street war correspondence in the United States. Designated. Designated. Appointed. With the vet. Yeah, it's like the Hamas guys, the Palestine guys are going to rally over here. The Jews are over there. You show up clearly marked. You, you know what I yeah. mean? And you chronicle the thing. And if the shit goes down, other people can get involved. How about this? Hmm. Okay, since you can't go after the press in war. Everybody in Ukraine, we just ship them jackets that say press. Yes. And they all walk around wearing press jackets and just hold up their phones. That, now you're doing what I wanted to do. I wanted to give all the homeless people in Los Angeles cop uniforms. <laughs> They'd be like, wow, what a police presence. That's great, too. <laughs> you, know, you know what I wanted to there'd do? There'd be no crime. It'd be like, there's tons and tons of cops They're all camped everywhere. out. You know what? They're everywhere. Yeah, I'm not going to rob that liquor store. There's six cops sitting in front of it. <laughs> That's great. I love that. That cop just threw up in a dumpster. That's great. Can I add to this? Yeah. Because I think, and this is equally as controversial, probably more, I think they should all be wearing cell towers. Because mm. I see them ah, in areas where I can't get can't reception. Get receptor. They're hiking through the canyon with the shop. And, and there cars. they are. There's You're a right. tent. I go, give them. You got a choice. You can either be a cell tower hobo <laughs> or a hop hobo. <laughs> All right. Let's take a break. We'll do some more news right after this. Hey, I don't know if you guys know, but it's See Better Drive Safer Month. Now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, they have put a spotlight on items to help you see the road more clearly. All month long, receive gift cards after rebate on select wiper blades and bulbs. If your wiper blades are streaking and smearing, well, they're worn out and they need to be replaced. But good news, you can get up to a $20 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with purchase of select wiper blades. Their professional parts people will install your new wiper blades and they'll do it for free. See the road better with new bulbs. Get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card after rebate with the purchase of Sylvania Silver Star Ultra or select ZXE Twin Pack Bulbs. They'll even help you pick out the right bulb for your vehicle. Visit your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store for details. O'Rewards members receive 
two times O Rewards points on select bulbs and up to four times points on cleaning supplies for your vehicle. Don't miss the See Better Drive Safer Month now at your local O'Reilly Auto Parts store or shop online at O'ReillyAuto.com. It's time to check Adam's voicemail. Hey, Ace, this is Dan from Ohio, sitting here listening to the pod. Oh, something you might want to add to your list of things you want to do before you die. Swing a rope with a grappling hook, and then when it catches, scale the wall. I'll take your answer on the air. I've always wanted to say that. You can leave us a message at 888-634-1744. Yeah, grappling hooks were a big deal from like 1967 to 74. Yeah. Grappling, you needed a grappling hook to get along. It yeah. started with Batman, yeah. I think. Yeah. Later, I think J.J. Arms, the action figure who was the actual uh, P.I. who actually <laughs> lost his arms, who then made a doll, I think he had a grappling hook attachment. Yeah, you had to grapple with your hooks back then. Now we, just, we grapple with our sexuality. <laughs> sure no more do. hooks. In our, simpler, in our glue guns. It was a simpler time when a man grappled with a hook and not his sexuality. I don't know but why I didn't do the entire podcast like this. I like this look. It's on, holding the mic, ba- balancing on it my. It gives gut. you like gravitas. Yeah, mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, I have an announcement. All right, let's do a little more. A little more news. I was so Orny's uh, very own Boston. Yeah. They, they announced that uh, in the majority of uh, Boston, they're going to be banning leaf blowers, gas-powered leaf blowers. They did that here. Did nothing. Well, that's right. <laughs> nothing. nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, you can't. You call. If someone breaks into your house, you call 911, they don't show up. You think they're going to show up for a leaf blower? <laughs> well, this a new, is, uh, a new report, um, they estimate that in 2020, the device has generated over 600,000 tons of carbon which uh, is equivalent to about 135,000 standard cars uh, yes. in 2020. So, yeah, and remember, California, they're, we're enacting a statewide ban next year on the sale of new gas-powered tools. Wow. Okay, so this ban has been in Los Angeles since 1999. Yeah. And they always miss the story of the leaf blower. There's three components, and they only focus on one, and they leave out two. One, and so they go, oh, we'll go with an electronic leaf blower or whatever. Okay, what comes out of the tailpipe is that shit runs on two-stroke. Two-stroke, Two-stroke yeah. is mix the oil with the gasoline, and that's where the black smoke and the noise comes out. And there's no catalytic converter or anything like that. So there is, <clears throat> it creates a lot of pollution. But the main problem is, is it's louder than shit. I can't tell you how many fucking Sundays and Saturdays have been ruined by hearing, yeah. it's louder than shit. And it kicks up a huge plume of dust. So it's essentially, you're going, well, I'm worried about what's coming out of the exhaust. But what's coming out of the exhaust is going into the air and dissipating very quickly. You firing the huge cloud of dust, which is comprised of rat shit Mm -hmm. and Roundup and and, and, and just spores and pollen and stuff. E. coli. That that I have to walk my dog through. Right. That's the particulate part. That's the part that goes, they always go, oh, those little parts they get in your lungs, they never come out. Like those, that's the part. It's the people that work at the fucking mill at the factory and stuff where they're taking, you know, MDF and a medium density fiberboard or whatever, and they're milling it all day and they're living in that class. The guy's got black lung now because you're taking in the particulates. They don't bring up that part. They're like so focus on what's coming out of the exhaust pipe, but that's not the problem. It's so the, the noise and the cloud. What's the solution? Rakes? The, the solution. <laughs> Okay. Okay, you're exasperated. Okay, well, I mean, I, I'm exacerbated by this because it, it speaks of the time we're at right now. Yeah. It speaks of the time. I was in Maui. I was at brunch. I was sitting outdoors with eight or ten people that I went on this trip with. And somehow we heard the leaf blower blowing in the background. Right. And I said they should make those things illegal. And then somebody said they should be illegal, whatever. And somebody, everyone started talking about how much they hated the leaf blower. Right. Then I said they are illegal in Los Angeles and have been illegal in Los Angeles since 1999. And they said, 
why didn't they why don't they enforce the law? And I said, because Los Angeles is very democratic and it's very progressive and all the people that are using the leaf blowers are poor brown people and they don't like the optics of coming down on poor Mexicans. Mm -hmm. That's the people they say they care about the most. And then everyone looked at me at the table and told me I was somewhere between racist and wrong. And then I said, I read an article. Mm -hmm. This is what I know. And they're like, oh, why are you being? I go, look. They, they they don't like the optics of punishing poor Mexican people, so they choose not to enforce this law. They enforce the laws if you don't have a front license plate. They enforce every right. building code law, but they will let the Mexicans sell the flowers outside of the mortuary or do the pop-up taco t- stent, tent in front of SoCal Stadium or whatever. They SoFi, they don't, they don't like the optics of it because they're progressive, and everyone looked at me like I was an asshole. Now, all I'm saying is, is I was right. Everyone at the table was wrong. I, it what wasn't, year was this? This is six years ago. I didn't come up with this. It was in the Times. It was an article. This is why we don't enforce the law. We enforce every other law, but we we sort of pick and choose depending on who gets busted. They don't enforce any of the Mexicans going down to the Staples Center and selling fucking ghetto dogs out of a shopping cart. They don't do it because they don't like the optics of it. The city council did. Then everyone at the table decided I was wrong, and then I told everyone to fuck off, mm-hmm. and there was a horrible brunch, and now we smash cut to COVID, which is, I know you guys all have your fucking feelings. Don't punish me for being correct. I'm sorry. I know I have information. I'm sharing it with you nine fucking dullard retards. Sorry you don't know what's going on. I'm not your problem. Go fucking work it out. This is the time we're living in. You're talking to a bunch of idiots at a brunch table. They've all ganged up and think you're wrong, even though they don't know anything about the subject. I was the only person who knows this subject at that table. But they all decided I was racist and wrong, yep. and they, they were empowered with each other. They didn't want to step out because they didn't want to be hit by the mallet of the other <laughs> being. And so I just sat there at the table being right <laughs> in front of fucking nine people who were wrong. Where did That's this life? Where did this burst of energy come from? I was thinking so about it earlier podcast. today. Like what? <laughs> this is what? This is why we're in the trouble we're in now. This is what just happened with COVID. I said, don't close the schools. Don't fucking do any of this stuff. And everyone looked at me at the fucking table of life and went, this guy must be removed from the table. And how did that feel, being the asshole at the table? I was like, look, given the choice of uh, being copacetic and being wrong um, versus being correct and being shunned, I'll take being correct every fucking time. And where do you, at the Jimmy Kimmel birthday dinner, (laughs) <laughs> Where do you stand in the asshole spectrum? Do you feel like a lot of people there think you're an asshole, or are you more accepted? They they, they think I'm on the spectrum with, like, Asperger's syndrome. That's what they I think. think. Yeah, they think it's that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So th- th- we give you a pass. Yeah. Oh, it's poor he, Adam. He, he's he got a syndrome. <laughs> yeah. <Poor Adam>. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> has ever said poor Adam, but they do think I have a syndrome. Do you, where that, do you on the, sorry, I know I yeah. just have so many questions mm. and you do this five days a week. Yeah. They get enough of you, these yes, listeners. True. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, they can eat their orny. <laughs> and it drives people nuts when I interrupt you on this mm-hmm. podcast. Where, where do you stand? Are you at the party? Are you Jimmy Kimmel's wife? Are you the number one friend? Uh, you sit who you sit next to sometimes. There's a lot of interesting characters there. You yeah. know, people who can talk, people who have opinions. Yeah. Lots of laughs. So there's not a real... Do you I mean, sit next to Jimmy? Or how far away from Jimmy do you get? I usually sit next to or across. Usually. Really? Wow. Yeah. But it depends, you know. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Who yeah. goes up to who first? Jimmy comes over to you or you go over to Jimmy? You show up at the restaurant and you sit down. But you know Jimmy's surrounded. He's a big deal. Yeah, but these are old friends. They don't don't care. I got to RSVP. I feel bad. Mm. You got to put that in, yeah. Yeah, I got to let them know I'm going. Yeah, yeah. I haven't decided yet. Okay. Well, (laughs) let me know first. I'll I'll put in the word. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) All right. So illegal leaf blowers, but everyone misses the point. Leaf blowers. But really... Los Angeles, so the plan is this. We will enforce certain laws and not enforce other laws depending on what color the person is who's right. being affected by the law. And you're saying that okay. if, well, okay. if the, major- the majority of the uninformed all will prevail over 
the inform. Oh, that's all. That's the time we're living in. A yeah. bunch of fucking dingbats has, calling, making, calling the shots. Has a single ticket ever been written for a leaf blower? No. We, no. They won't enforce it. It's a, by the way, what? How? How? Is there a law that's easier to enforce? Right. You know what I mean? Louder and shit, standing in the middle of the street. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there have been cops that have run over guys right. with leaf blowers, but yep. they've not cited them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. They. And, and it just here's what it shows. It shows that they're colossal hypocrites. Colossal hypocrites. Here's a device that makes more air pollution than. Uh, Ford F-350 driving around the world twice. It literally does. All you guys do is talk about air pollution. That's all you do is talk about the environment air pollution. You made a law to say these devices that pollute way more than a fleet of Chevy vans do in a year, and you won't enforce it. So are you into air pollution or are you not into air pollution? Okay, yeah, That's my question. You're fucking hypocrites. Okay. Uh, you know, you have a good point. How about, 100% hypocrites. Yeah. How about this? How about like an, uh, a leaf vacuum? Why don't they do that? And they There's such a thing. Oh, there is. Everything. Yeah, I have one of those. You do? I do. Look at you. Everything is just, everything, people are such idiots. I, I, look. Why? Because he has a, a leaf vacuum? You don't have to. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> a hero. Like that. Thank you, Arnie. He's, yeah, he's a hero. The, the point is, is this. You outlaw them and then everyone goes, Oh, we know that's going to add an extra 20 minutes every time that gardener comes to the house. If he's got to vacuum up or he's got to buy a new piece of equipment or he's got to rake the leaves. I go, yeah. And then he's going to have to pass that on to the consumer. Right. So everybody who has a gardener, leaf blowers will be illegal and it's going to cost you an extra $47 a month. There you go. We're done. That's it. That's it. Just pass it along. Fine. I went to City Hall. Last month, and I spoke at a uh, at a hearing. Mm. Yeah, at the uh, the, the uh, council hearing about tour buses. Really? Yeah. Why? Find this footage, Byron. Because there's there's a problem in my neighborhood with tour buses stopping, and they have loudspeakers. Oh, tourist bus. Yes, a, a tour oh, bus. I like- we call them tour buses. Oh, I, but, but you're a comedian talking about tour buses. You think you're getting in a bus. Yeah, but not at my level. Going going no, those are, that's why other com- yeah. No, your other guests have tour buses. Well, they're on the road selling <laughs> yeah. out stadiums. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm or middle seat in town. I'm middle seat Southwest. No, by the way, I am too. Thanks for offering to drive me to Vegas on Thursday. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Middle seat Southwest, because I checked in three minutes after the, 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 the time oh, no, to take off time. Yeah, 24 you hours say before. tourist bus, otherwise we're Okay, so we have these buses in Los Angeles that they drive these buffoons. These desperate, stupid people that want to see where people like Adam Carolla right. lives one or two days a week versus the, the other days of the week right. at his other houses. Right. They point at my house and they say in a loudspeaker, Cuba Gooding Jr. lives there. Right. Right. He doesn't. No. Now, they point at all these houses. They're loudspeakers. They cause traffic and honking. So we, we've been trying to get them, you know, at least the loudspeakers. I don't right. mind buses coming up. I think it's kind of cool that they like our neighbors, but don't lie. Right. So I went to city council and spoke on behalf of the neighborhood, and I was really, I was proud of myself. I took <laughs> time out of my day to do this, and I had to follow, you ready for this? Mm. A guy named Goat Puppet <laughs> that spoke <laughs> through a puppet going, eh, 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 eh. Yeah, because they're all nuts. And he got <laughs> twice as twice as much time to speak as I did. Wow. Well, it was and him more and the puppet. No, but he only spoke really as a... Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> and he had to sit there no. and indulge this. Well, I hope you did better than Kevin Nealon. Did he speak? Yeah. He spoke years ago on behalf of Bubbles the Elephant. Billy the Elephant. Billy the Elephant. What is this? He spoke at a city council Sounds meeting. Like Byron. Yeah. He had uh, one minute. To talk about an elephant that was being wrongfully oh. kept in a yeah, cage. You do get a minute. He ran out of material about 14 <laughs> seconds in. Oh, did he? Yeah. Well, I have. I, I should have brought the recording. I I did. I to the second. I did exactly 60 seconds. Go puppet went over. They light you at 45. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they do actually. There's a clock. I watched it counting down. I got off exactly on time. That's and a I, pro. That's because yeah. you're a pro. Yeah, I never run. That's right. And I got an applause. From not the city council people, but even the tour bus drivers and owners applauded me because I said, I don't, I said, uh, they're stopping in the middle of the street. Right. Okay. So you want to enforce 
something that seems illegal. So why don't we start start there? Mm-hmm. And then I said, if I were the tour buses, you know what I would do? I'd be a lot quieter. I wouldn't let people know you're in the neighborhood. We don't know you're in the neighborhood until you're outside right. of a house with a loudspeaker or right. causing traffic jams right. and honking. So and they you, applauded you that. Did, how'd you do in merch? Sold a ton of Sent merch. a lot of merch. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, these new Penn and Teller. Uh, cards, you got merch cards? cards? I got, I got Penn and Teller. Yeah, I got everything. All right, do we have Kevin Nealon talking about Billy the Elephant? I am Kevin Nealon, and I am not anti-zoo, uh, but I am anti-inadequate zoo. And um, I just want what's best for Billy the Elephant and not what's best for the L.A. Zoo. And it's... Uh, I just, I, I feel that. All right, stop. You know, he, if, he got 11 seconds in. Yeah. And lost his, yeah. lost his way. Wasn't prepared. He, Wasn't had, prepared. he had a great opening line. We'll keep it going. We'll keep it going. Sorry. You know, if, if an elephant has a choice to go to a, um, a habitat or a, a sanctuary, like the one down in Tennessee, I'm sure that they would take that in one second. From the history that we uh, understand about the LA County Zoo, it's not a great place for elephants. You look at all the elephants that have died there since 1975, and it's not good. So I'm, I'm in favor of moving Billy out of the zoo, as I think everybody should be, and I'm sorry that so many people are misguided uh, with uh, the exhibit, for the plans for the exhibit as it exists now. Thank you. I, I, I couldn't even use his full minute. Uh, can I just say, probably, not only is that hard to watch, as someone who's friends with Kevin Nealon. Mm-hmm. But I think, really, if you can go back, Dawson, can I just point this out? I think, really, the, the saddest part about this is nobody cares that it's Kevin Nealon. No. The girl on the right never even looks up. She's, like, rolling her eyes. Yeah, she's just, nobody cares. Yeah. There's, the Girl Scouts are there. They don't mm-hmm. care. SNL alum. Yeah. And you could give two shits. Yeah. Sad. It really yeah. is. They, I, I was, it was a big deal for me to be. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a big deal for me. Uh, I'm right. not competitive with Kevin, but... No, but you blew him out of the water you, in terms of addressing well, the city council. I'm very charismatic. Yeah. Like, everyone goes, this guy's a pro. So even the city council, and this was shocking to me, they don't even look up. Most right. of the, They're on their phones or they're talking to their... Right. I started speaking, mm. and everybody perked up, everybody listened. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they were tuned out for Goat Boy. Yeah, it, it turns out Goat... A goat, a goat puppet. Goat puppet is there every week. <laughs> oh, He's a geez. fixture. Oh, God. So once I posted a video about goat pu- puppet and me following him, everyone's like, "No, he's there every week." Oh, him and Melrose Larry, whatever oh, that guy. Melrose Larry is oh, yeah. still alive. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ! Yeah. Uh, Norm Macdonald's dead, and Melrose Larry yeah. is still alive. Oh God. All right, well, let's go out on that super <laughs> depressing note. Melrose, Larry Green. Orny's got shows all over the place. Irvine Improv coming up December 8th through the 10th. See a guy that uh, Leno gives his blessing to because he finds him so funny. He's a pro. The rest of the audience loves it. Go watch a pro work. Go to ornyadams.com for all the live shows. What's wrong with Orny Adams on the pod as well? Uh, I got well, shows. I'll read your up. dates. Read my dates. Okay. And uh, this is course, uh, correlates to Taylor Swift. So Adam will be in Sacramento, California, the punchline this Friday and Saturday. In fact, there's only tickets available for the late show Friday. Okay. Yeah, I feel like you could get rid of the this Friday and Saturday and just go only tickets. I'm just reading what's yeah, on the screen. Yeah, no, I'm talking to them. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. But yeah. Fargo, yeah. North Dakota just got a little bit warmer because <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Warm himself. Mr. Sensitivity. Mr. Sensitivity will be there November 30th. How do you guys feel about your leaf blowers and your mm-hmm. gas plows? Nashville, oh, Tennessee. Hot Halloween talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nashville, Tennessee, December 1st and 2nd. Not too late to hear about Adam's Thanksgiving jokes. He'll mm-hmm. still be doing mm-hmm. those at Zany's Comedy Club. Huntsville, Alabama. Stand Up Live, December 3rd, Las Vegas, Nevada. He'll be back at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club and then Rancho Mirage, California at the Aqua Caliento Casino. Stand Up, December 16th. They just uh, I just heard they just added a second show, Adam. The, the yeah, they show added did. a second so show. Well. Yeah. All right. So, until next time, Adam Crowley for Orny Adams, Chris Max Pata. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.